So what would this be then? Two and a half. Two, no, not no, two and a half. Not two and a half. People are like, what, what's going on here? Hold <laughs> on, you'll find out in a minute. What do you think? What? What? This would be volume two, go. Oh. Welcome to the Rebels cast. What's going on? Because this is not right. No. I, I don't know where I am. I, I don't know. Who How did I get here? And who are you? <laughs> I don't know. And who are they? Who are they? Who are they? <laughs> um, okay, folks. So let us, let us let your mind at ease. You are not having a stroke. <laughs> Nor, well, you might be, but it's not because, it's not because we're here. <laughs> yeah, the evidence of that would not be the fact that we're here. You're not having a mental breakdown. Again, same thing applies. Maybe you are, but this is not the evidence of it. Right. What's going on is very simple. Mm -hmm. There are new hosts for the Rebels cast. Mm -hmm. And so you may be thinking, what is going on? Uh, well, you know, things are always fluctuating, always in motion is the world of the internet podcasting. Yep. And so Nikki and Jonathan who you are used to having, uh, are not going to be doing this podcast anymore. I um, mean, things are going well for them, but just, you know, scheduling and life things, and, you know, it, it makes it such that sometimes people have to be swapped out. So um, it was it was decided that, that, that obviously the show needed to go on, mm -hmm. and so a call was put forth from the a lofty ivory tower of the Southgate Media Group, you know, just sort of like, you know, meanwhile, the Hall of Justice, you know, so <laughs> Rob... Hall of the Justice League. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. And so Rob Southgate put out a call for someone to take over the Rebels cast. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we'll, we'll do it. Hey. We can fly. <laughs> we're pilots. <laughs> and so he said... Really, anyone, does anybody want to take over doing this show? Anyone, just speak up. And so, unfortunately, no one else spoke up. Yep. And so, we are here. We win by default. That's right, exactly. We're the best because no one else played. <laughs> and that's how you win. That's how you get trophies. <laughs> that's how you get trophies. And that's but how you get girls. That's how you get the girls. That's right. <laughs> so, um, you may remember us if you have a decent memory and have been listening to this show from the get-go because originally the Rebels cast was going to be a four-person roundtable discussion. Yep. It was going to be Jonathan and Josh and Nikki and Nick. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny how that works yeah. out? Two J's. Two J's. Two ends. Two ends. Yep. But it, it just, it ended up not working out because as we've, you know, thought about this, our special brand of whatever it is that we do yeah, uh, doesn't quite work on Skype. No. We're uh, Skype haters. Yeah, we, we hate it. Down with Skype. Yeah. Uh, it, it's good if you have to use it, but, uh, and, and some people flourish in it. Yeah. We, well, some people have better internet connections than I do. That also helps, yes. that That's true. Uh, and so we, we just realized that, you know, I... Maybe what we do doesn't work at all, but it certainly doesn't work over Skype. Right. Uh, and so we decided that it would be best uh, and make it easier uh, for the show if if we just kind of bowed out. Uh, and so that's what we did. But now we have returned. Mm -hmm. And so we are here to talk about all of your Star Wars Rebels podcasting needs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you just um, plain need it. Yeah, you just, you just keep <laughs> wanting and needing to whoo, make your head blow off. So I guess we should, should we introduce ourselves for those? No, let's just keep no. it a secret. Okay. <laughs> I'm blah, 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 blah. And he's, <laughs> and so here we go. So in the Leia episode, <laughs> okay, fine. You've twisted my one good arm. <laughs> so we will, we will explain who we are just a little mm -hmm. bit. We actually recorded an entire episode. Yeah. Where we told you all of what we're about to tell you. Yeah, but it took a lot longer. Yeah. And uh, and so we decided, you know what? We need to get to the Rebels. Yeah. And so we're going to do an abbreviated re-meet the hosts for the next few minutes, and then we're going to jump into discussing two episodes, mm -hmm. uh, because that's how the show is going to have to work. Yeah. But, so, so anyway, um, we are, uh, we're us. Yep. 
And well, we we we're, we're you may also know us if you yes. don't know us from the beginning of Rebels Cast, right? You may know us from uh, from our other two podcasts that we've had. Um, we're currently doing the Interdorkdom now. I mean, not right now. Right now. <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> Hold on, Interdorkdom. <laughs> we're editing it out of that podcast. No, go ahead. Um, but we we also did we also have some experience in Star Wars podcasting because um, before we did uh, before we moved the Interdorkdom to the Southgate Media Group, right? The Lofty uh, Ivory Tower, right? We were. Uh, we were doing the clone cast. Yes. Where we covered the uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. And we did over somewhere around 50 episodes. Yeah. Of that show. It was a lot. And, and it was a lot of fun. And then, then Disney bought Lucasfilm and canceled the Clone Wars. Yeah. And we had no more Star Wars show to <laughs> so talk about. So we canceled the clone cast. That's right. We're like, well, fine, Disney. We can do that too. <laughs> Boom. Done. Unfortunately, we didn't get get a lot of money no. in return or yeah. anything like that. And it didn't work out well for us. They were like, "Okay, let's start working on this new thing." Yeah, because, you know, the way they did with some of the folks who then went to Rebels. But, yeah, yeah. But so, so yeah. So you may recognize us uh, from from those ventures. I am your host, Nick Weymouth, and with me, as always, is your other host, Josh Shaw. Yes, and um, and so sometimes so- known as Axel Foley Ooh. or Harold Faltermeyer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Exactly, Harold. Exactly. <laughs> and if you know who those people are, yay for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you get the cookie today. So, uh, I, I guess a little bit of a word about us and a word about the show, uh, because, you know, if you've been a longtime listener, you may be sitting there right now going, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't like them guys. <laughs> they, they, I think they might be from the South. <laughs> and and they're 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 all like hoo hee hee and talking and laughing. I just don't know about mm. all of that. <laughs> and so we want you to stay. Uh-huh. We don't want you to go. We want you to stay with us and and keep yeah. listening to the show. Uh, but it yeah. is going to be a transition period. So to make it more smoothly, we're going to let you know all of our scary secrets right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want killed a man. No, not really. We don't do that down here. So, and that man was me. That's right. But then I brought him back to life with in the s- powers of Satan <laughs> in a southern seance, y'all. <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah, very it, true. Except for the whole, I killed him and he came back to life and Satan in a seance thing. But the southern part is accurate. Right. Yeah, because we are we are from the south. Yeah. Yes. So, um, let's see. What do you want to know about us? Um, in terms of, um, I guess what Star Wars fandom? Well, well you, you we're, go. we're yeah. big Star Wars fans. Big Star Wars fans. We love the Star Wars, mm-hmm. um, which is good given what we're about to be doing. Yeah, um, we're just just a quick rundown. We're you know we're big Star Wars fans. Mm-hmm. We you know, are the weird people that like the prequels. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, like them more than the original trilogy. That's right. Even though we like the original trilogy. Yeah, we like the original trilogy a, a lot. lot. Um, we were skeptical of episode seven because George Lucas was not going to be involved. Mm-hmm. And that's because we like George Lucas. Right. We're, we're the, one of those weird people that do like the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we ended up seeing episode seven and we liked it. Yes. Uh, had some problems with it. Right. But it's, it's still a good movie. You can, you can go to the inner dorkdom and listen to our kind of overview of the movie. Yeah, we have um, been talking about that movie for three years over on the Inner Dorkdom. Yeah, yeah. The Inner Dorkdom is supposed to just be sort of a general nerd interest type of mm-hmm. podcast. And shortly after we sort of rebooted it on Southgate Media is when the announcement happened. And then so we just couldn't stop talking about Star Wars. We, <laughs> yeah. we said at one point, we're going to stop talking about Star Wars. And that went for like two episodes. Mm-hmm. And we talked about Back to the Future, which if you're not going to talk about Star Wars, might as well talk about Back to the Future. Uh, yep. And then then we, we, we just kind of came back to Star Wars. And so, yeah, um, we're actually in the middle. At this point right now, um, the first part of our big two-parter in-depth discussion of The Force Awakens is up over on the Inner Dorkdom. So if you want to check that out. Wait, so we've got, now there's two episodes of The you, Force okay, Awakens? Because yeah, there, there was, was the first the one. The first one, right after we watched it. And, and then, then the, the big long one that I was split up I did not two. know that that episode was up yet. Yeah. Did um, I? Did, uh, I don't did think I know you that? did. I don't think, <laughs> I'm not sure. L- let me go into your, let me peer into your mind with my southern seance powers. <laughs> See, no, you did not know. Um, but, uh, but my understanding is that it's up. I want to okay. say I searched for it the other day and I found it. So okay. either that or I was having the stroke in the hallucination <laughs> <Right>. psychotic <laughs> episode and breakdown could have been. Yeah. But yeah, so, so when it comes to Star Wars films, uh-huh. 
we like them all. Yep. But we like the prequels more, but we like them all. Yeah. And that's kind of that that's a smaller and smaller group I think amongst Star Wars fans. Yeah. You you've got people now that, you know, that just like the original trilogy and don't like episode 7. Mm-hmm. You got people that just like anything from uh 4 and up, mm-hmm. um, then you've got, you know, I guess there's people out there that just like the prequels and don't like anything else. Right. I mean, it's possible. I, I've never heard of those people. But. <laughs> they live in the magical <laughs> land of Narnia. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it, usually people who like the prequels mm. kind of like everything right. else, too. Yeah. Um, and you, you do have the people who like the prequels but don't like them nearly as much as the new stuff or, right. or the, the original trilogy mm. or episode seven. You know, there may be some younger people who sort of, you know, grew up with the prequels and really yeah. like those, but then try to go back and watch the originals and are like, this is so uh, old this is dated. and dated and what's yeah. up with the hair? There may be those people, <laughs> you know, that it's like, you know what's stopping them from liking the original trilogy? Hairstyles. <laughs> right. I'd like this movie if he didn't have a hair over his ears like that. What's that all about? That looks like the pictures of my mama and dada when they got married. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, big lapels and stuff. Yeah. And Lando's like, cool, 45. <laughs> But, so, uh, and we're we're we're, uh, we're not particular particularly fans of the EU, right? Um, we we always knew even back in the day when that's all we had, like before the prequels came back mm. or came out, we knew that uh, that that was not real. Right? I mean, we knew it was not an official canon. <laughs> it wasn't real the way Luke Skywalker's real. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, there were things in the EU that we enjoyed. Yep. Very 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 few things, but, but we did. They like, did exist, you know, like yeah. um, Shadows of the Shadows Empire. Of the um, I like the X-Wing books. Yep, the the X-Wing and TIE Fighter games. Yes, yes. Just some of the best games oh, ever yes. made. Still, to yeah. this day. Um, I liked a lot of the um, the prequel era novels. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, at that point, we, we knew, and we definitely knew that these things aren't legit. But still, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I liked a lot of those. Those were those were good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we both read the Air of the Empire trilogy. Yeah, yeah. And we both liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even... Even at that point, there was still, I think, on some level, maybe I'm just retroactively, retrospectively putting words into my mouth from when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you do that, by the way, but anyway. Stuff. Yeah, but I, if anybody can do it, Satan, Southern <laughs> Seance powers. Now, right. We're actually Christians, so. Yeah, so. <laughs> if you're wondering, they keep talking about Satan a lot. Maybe they Maybe really, they do maybe like they the they Dark believe. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually Christians, believe it or not. So uh, that's why we. we do they do it. sacrifice the children and the goats together on the same altar. <laughs> no, <laughs> different altars. You don't want to. You don't want to mix the blood. Oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> don't be tacky. <laughs> <laughs> the dog lord likes to be couth and you know <laughs> it's just certain things that are just unacceptable come on now <laughs> really no but anyway uh, oh yeah so words in my mouth when I was a kid um, there was I think there was always on some level something about the Air of the Empire trilogy that I'm like I like this but it doesn't quite yeah, feel yeah there's something the wrong yeah you know I think it, it partially I mean I still liked it but I think I liked it because on some level I'm like yeah they're kind of doing some Star Trek stuff with it now <laughs> which, yeah because it was a little bit more sci-fi exactly than... which you know of course now as the prequels have come out as Clone Wars has come out it's become apparent that that's really not Star Wars' deal right. baby I mean you that the evidence is clear in episode 7 yeah when it's like the the, <laughs> the, the, the... <laughs> What? <laughs> go ahead, no, go ahead. Tell them. Tell them all about it. <laughs> I mean, the the big deal about Episode Seven is you know the Jedi stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're the going there. Stuff. Yeah. What are you I, thought, I about? thought you're going with. Look, we're on one planet and we can see another planet. Oh well, yeah. Like that, <laughs> well, that's light, true. <laughs> hundreds of light years away, blowing up. <laughs> yeah. So like the, mm. the the science in the in the science fiction of Star Wars Episode Seven is not really so great. Kind of strict. It's written in small letters <laughs> with, a, with a light right. pencil. It's yeah. not really like science. It's <laughs> really like, hey, it's fiction. So, but even even the importance placed on it is yes, not really... Exactly. Uh, it's yeah. not really there. Right, exactly. Movie. I mean, even like with the Starkiller base, not just this seeing it from far away blow stuff up, but just the whole, like, it sucks planets and stars drama. It's just kind of glossed over to be like, oh, it's like a bigger Death Star. You know, yeah. It's just not It's not really a big deal. The thing that, I mean, it's basically the movie maker saying the thing you really want to see is Kylo Ren and Rey. Yeah, exactly. You want to see Force stuff. Yeah. And it's like, yes, we do. That's, that's right. That's, that's very, that is, you are correct, J.J. That's very good. <laughs> now, watch that episode of Rebels. There's a ripes in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. So, let's see. 
Um, yeah, Air of the Empire trilogy. Oh, yeah, the science thing. You know, it was nice going back to TIE Fighter and X-Wing. You know, how, like, the the nerdy rules about, hey, here's how an X-Wing works, and here's how a TIE Fighter works, yeah. you know, interdictor cruisers and stuff like that. Like, that science aspect of it, I liked. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's still, there was this kind of feeling of... Well, and, and, and our, um, our Star Wars fandom was kind of changed with that, because, like, it used to be, like, when all we had was the original trilogy, mm. like, that's the kind of stuff we liked. Yeah. Was we were, the spaceship stuff. Yeah, it's all X-Wing and Tops I mean, stuff. The Jedi stuff was, you know, it was okay, and, but, I mean, there's not really a whole lot of it in there. Right. And, I mean, or at least, there is, but it's not... It's not the deal. It's not. It's not the it's not big, there. huge deal. Yeah. They talk about it like it was a deal. Yeah, exactly. But it's sort of in the background. Yeah. You know, and even the a lot more mysterious. Yeah, and even the conflict with Luke and and Anakin, even though it is Jedi versus Sith, there, for example, on the Death Star, mm. it it plays out because we didn't have the prequels at that point. It kind of plays out more focusing on the father son aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the Sith Jedi thing is kind of in the background. It's there, but it's not It's not front and center. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we were all about the X-Wings and the TIE Fighters and that that sort of thing. Yeah. Then the prequels come out, and then it's like the, our focus on Star Wars changes because it's like, oh, the Jedi were were a big deal. Yeah. And we, we find that out now, so, and they're pretty cool. Yeah. So, not and, like those kids on AOL screen rooms that chat rooms that pretend <laughs> to be Jedi and are jerks. Yeah. <laughs> not that I ever visited such places. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no but, desire to role play as a Jedi. They're dumb. And the most interesting thing that I've always thought about that is that our main character, after seeing the prequels, completely changes for the whole six movies. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it used to be, I mean, when we had the original three, we had we had one main character, that yeah. was Luke Skywalker. The just, end. Just wants to go to Tashi Station, pick up some power converters. That's right. Get wrapped up in a whole, world of adventure. A whole uh, much larger world. Exactly. And then with uh, when when the prequels came out, it's like, oh wait, the bad guy is the main character <laughs> of this story. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. So it's it strengthens the the prequels strengthen the original. So trilogy. much so. And I think for some people, they you know their idea of what they expected Star Wars to be because mm-hmm. everybody, if you're a fan of a property, you have some idea of these are the bounds inside of which this is the thing, and outside of which, no, it ain't. You know, so for example, take music. Um, some people had certain ideas about what metallic music should be. So then right. when Load and Reload comes example. out, yeah. those are outside of, of those boundaries for a lot of people, and so they hated it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, And so I think the same thing kind of happened with, with, with Star Wars. People had certain ideas about what Star Wars should be, and then Episode One comes along, and there's a lot of stuff that, that was in Episode One that was probably in a lot of people's boxes, but the main focus was stuff that was outside. Mm-hmm. And so people were like, this this isn't Star Wars, because they had a certain view of what Star Wars is. Right. And that's the thing. Episode One, Episode Two, Episode Three expand what it means to be Star Wars, what it means to be a Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened to be that those expansions were into areas that we really found interesting mm-hmm. and we really liked. And so it was like, you know, 99 through 2005, we're like, yay, you know, this <laughs> yeah. is good stuff. And then, you know, 2005, you you leave the movie theater, it's like, no more Star Wars. And then, and then we get the Clone, Clone Wars movie. Wars. Yes, the Clone yeah. Wars movie, the Clone Wars show. How do we feel about the Clone Wars show? Love it. Loved it. I mean, honestly, I mean, there are arcs of the clone wars that rival any of the movies mm, like 170 i still like the ships and stuff i can still be nerdy about it a little bit well yeah yeah <laughs> but but yeah certain arcs that mm-hmm. are just phenomenal yeah um and we were those weird people that liked the clone wars from the beginning yeah because you know people don't maybe remember this as much but when the clone wars first came out it was still cool to hate everything Star Wars. Yeah. By Star Wars fans, that right. is. Star Wars fans thought it was cool to hate Star Wars things, so it was like, oh, I hate this, and, you know, Anakin's got a Padawan, and she's a snippy little girl, and yada da 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 But we liked it, even because we were watching the movie, and the, the projector messed up at about, what, 10, 15 minutes in yeah. the movie? Uh-huh. And so it just kind of froze, so we're sitting there waiting for it to, you know, start up again, and we're like, I was like, Josh, what do you think? Or maybe you're like, Nick, what do you think? I was like, we like it! Yeah. yeah. So... It's um we love the show. And it just kept for the most part it kept getting better as it went along. Yeah. Like as far as the quality of uh, production. Yes. Oh. Like went way up. But now I will argue that probably season 2 is the strongest mm. season of season the Clone Season 2 Wars. is so good. 
Yeah. It really is. But, uh, and then after that, like, well, like the, uh, the lost missions, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. season, like the half season yeah. the, that we got on Netflix, that one is extremely strong. Yeah. It's very solid. Um, but, uh, like season three kind of, eh, it kind of dipped a little bit and mm-hmm. then it started coming back up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like season two is one, the ones that I can just sort of put on and watch every episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, all oh, good. It's this episode. Now it's this <laughs> yeah. one. Now it's this one. You know, whereas other seasons, uh, there are episodes I'm like, eh, you know, it was good, but I'm not necessarily maybe like, woo, I want to watch this right. One right now. So, uh, but, but, but still through and through a good show, solid show. We really liked it. And we were again, very distraught and disappointed when it was canceled. Yep. But it was to make way for Rebels. Rebels. Yeah, there and everywhere. <laughs> so what what do we think of Rebels since we're going to be hosting a show about Rebels? It has also continuously gotten better. Mm-hmm. Like even even in the first season, like it starts off pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it it keeps getting progressively better and then season 2 looks to like especially if you see the the second oh. half of season 2 trailer. Oh that, goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. I'm like you know, it kind of works out really well that this is when we're starting the show. <laughs> yeah. Because we're about to get into some stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, the fact that in season two, well, she shows up at the end of season one, but you've got Ahsoka. Uh-huh. And then in season two, you've still got Ahsoka. And we've got Rex and some of the clones and, and Hondo Anaka. I mean, it really is like, okay, we've done season one to introduce you to this new group of characters and now in season two... Now we're going to continue the Clone Wars story. Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, this is kind of like a weird weird kind of Clone Wars season seven-ish kind of thing. Yeah. Throwing in the new characters as well. And, and it works. And mm-hmm. it, it works really, really well. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's a pretty cool time to be a Clone Wars fan doing a show yeah. on Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, true. I mean, with the Anakin stuff. Oh, mercy. Goodness gracious. Oh. Great balls of fire. I, just, I love it. And if, if you notice, folks, uh, if you uh, listen to the opening uh, credit music mm-hmm. uh, for our show, you'll notice that there's a little melody in there that you may or may not recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's actually... Uh, well, if you're a fan of the 80s and Cindy Lauper, not Cindy Lauper, <laughs> Cindy Lauper didn't sing, no, I think we're alone now. <laughs> Tiffany sang that. <laughs> you may think of it as, I think we're alone now. But it's also, if you're a Weird Al fan, I think I'm a clone now, uh-huh. which is the song that we use as the opening for the uh, the clone cast. And so we put it in there partially for that, obviously, but then also because this really kind of is like Rebels slash Clone Wars show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, like I say, it's it's kind of appropriate uh that 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 they were here for this. Yeah. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. the music that you hear at the beginning and the end of this show, Nick wrote that. Well, you know, John <laughs> Williams wrote a lot of it, yeah. and I sort of arranged it. But yeah. yes, um, and but then Josh arranged it mm-hmm. uh, on electronically. I guess he has better sound. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a real orchestra, sir. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. (laughs) Never mind. Shh, don't tell (laughs) nobody. I made a note. We can cut it out. It's a real orchestra. (laughs) And and, and they they played the music that I invented. (laughs) That's Uh, Back to the Future reference number number one. one. We make references. The other thing you're going to notice about the show is that sometimes we are goofy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, And and we we will reference other things. Back to the Future Mm -hmm. is one. Star Trek is another. Yep. Um, and we usually count our Star Trek and Back to the Future references. Yeah. So because that's another thing we're, we're weird people on mm-hmm. is we like Star Trek too. Yes. <laughs> not not as in not, the Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Not in the Wrath of Khan. Although Kong. we did like that. Yeah, we did like yeah, that. But did, as in we did not like Into Darkness. Though. No. You mean Wrath of Khan <laughs> alternate world? No. Right. Stop that. No. Stop that. But yeah, we actually really like mm-hmm. both franchises. Yep. So. You know, if you're like, I love Star Wars and Star Trek's horrible, well... This ain't your this show. This ain't your show. You might as well <laughs> mosey on, stranger. Because we're going to reference that every now and then, and it'll be wonderful. Will yep. we do it today? Maybe. Maybe not. You quite should possible. See. It is quite possible. We haven't yes. gotten through an episode that I know of yet without at least one Star Trek reference. Yes, I think you're exactly right. So so that'll happen. But yeah, so so we, we sometimes get random. We sometimes get a little goofy. Um, <laughs> not a little goofy. <laughs> A little goofy. Yeah, that was, that was bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yes. Anyway, so yes, the the music, uh, the opening and the closing. It's mm-hmm. it's it's kind of it's fun. So yeah, isn't mm-hmm. that cool? Yeah. Mm, all right. So let's see. We've talked about how we feel about Rebels, how we feel about Clone Wars, how we feel about Star Wars movies and stuff. Uh, we talked about EU. Anything else that they need to know about us? Um, let's talk a little bit about our podcast philosophy in terms of sort of 
the approach that we take. Okay. Um, what I'm getting at is the whole sometimes, most of the time, <laughs> that is, we don't have a whole lot of copious notes. No, no, we wing this. The vibe <laughs> is, you've said before, the vibe that you kind of have always wanted the show to have, and yeah. I agree with you, Master, is... <laughs> Um, basically we want it, want it to be like, you're sitting here in the room with us and listening to us talk, yeah. like just having a conversation with us. Cause we don't, we don't care about structure and things like that. I mean, never have and never will. The end. The end. <laughs> so anyway, next point. Get it? Cause like we did put the end. Sorry. Was lame humor. Go ahead. Um, so like usually what we do, at least this is how we did the clone cast, um, we would uh, we would look at the Wikipedia summaries mm. or Wikipedia summaries yes. for each episode and kind of go through them to kind of give us uh, give us points to talk about. But we wouldn't make notes on those things or anything like we've tried that before right. and it just don't work. Yeah, usually I'm mean, every once in a while, like the Mortis trilogy. I think we made some notes yeah. um, when when there was a big arc that we really you know were itching to make sure we brought up some point we yeah. would kind of make little notes like that but that's about usually as far as it goes yeah um and so even though we try to be in depth and we try to be sort of you know thinky about it like it's yeah. not just we, we try to not sort of do a show where it's like boy look at that thing that was cool no you, you know there's so many podcasts out there about star wars that it's like why do another one you know, there's got to be something different about it. And so this is kind of, it's a combination of stupidity and randomness along with, you know, we really like the philosophical, ethical, spiritual side of Star Wars. Right. And so we, we kind of try to bring those things out. Mm -hmm. Like we always would make a point about what the fortune cookie was and yeah. have a little discussion about that back in the day. So it's, um, it, it really is like this, Here's a couple of idiots that like to think about things that are going to talk, and I'm in the room with them, but they won't ever listen to me when I talk. <laughs> right. Because we can't hear you. But you can Man. talk to us if you like. All you got to do is email us mm -hmm. at rebelscastsmg at gmail.com. Yes. And we like to get emails. Yeah. That was one of the things about the clone cast that we just absolutely love. Yes. Is we we would get we had some people some regular listeners mm -hmm. that would email in and stuff and we would read their uh, email on on the show yep. and and converse back and forth with them that way and uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we would uh, we would spend so much time on <laughs> emails that uh, we would never get to the show we'd never get to the show we'd be like well in the next episode we're going to talk about the episode of the Clone Wars that we were going to cover on this episode but right. did not get to but don't don't think that that's a reason that you shouldn't email us that's right no. email us anyway do it because if it happens to be, if we get so many emails which I'm hoping we do hmm. if we get so many emails we'll just have email episodes yeah we'll just designate every so many episodes will be email episodes yeah um, also, we can put some of those emails we might would do sort of like in the summer. If your email was not timely, I may be like, hey, man, you think I should get this thing today? Mm -hmm. You know, well, that email we probably need to answer quickly. All right. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and, and while I'm thinking about it, I guess that kind of segues into um, we know that there are episodes of oh, yeah. the show that the Jedi are not telling me. Wait, no. <laughs> I, we know there are episodes that have not been discussed on the Rebels cast. Yeah. We're going to get to those. Yes. Um, we're but not today. Not today. That's, that's number, number one. one. And, and that's, that's number, number two. two. See, because number one is Commander Riker, so that automatically is right. another reference. Every time we say <laughs> we count our first, we say that's number one. Number one is itself a reference, and that's number two. Number two. Yes. <laughs> Um, but we we will get to those episodes. What we 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 Every episode we're gonna do, we're gonna cover two episodes right. of the clone of mm. the rebels. <laughs> See, it just happens. It <laughs> See, just yeah. flows. <laughs> it just comes out. So, uh, because uh, because we do the way we do our schedules, we record every two weeks. Mm. So by that point, there'll be two episodes out, and we'll cover those. And um, 
then at the end of this season, hmm. we'll go back and do the episodes that uh, Jonathan, Jonathan and Nikki missed. Right. And uh, so we'll eventually get everything covered. Right. So that way, when the third season starts in the fall, we'll right. be completely caught up. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how we'll that's how we'll roll. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you won't get started covering one, uh, covering a show or an email. Oh, we've got an email. No, already? I thought you your phone the way oh, you were no. looking at it. I got all excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, we've even got a song, folks. Well, let me check and we've, see if we've, we've got, got an email. <laughs> <laughs> we've got one. Well, here, where's our first email? Welcome to Gmail. Because <laughs> I did put it on. Um, yeah, you put it on the old Clonecast group. Yeah, on the Facebook. Yeah, which we still have. And sometimes people they say stuff on it, and sometimes they don't. It just depends. Rebels yeah. cast. Rebels cast. Uh, so empty. while Josh is looking that up, uh, I'm going to tell you a joke. How do you get a one-armed man off a telephone pole? <laughs> <laughs> you wave at him. Because he waves and falls down. I can make that joke because I only have one and a half arms. That's, right. That's a true story. And so every, every, every once in a while, I might make some lame joke about handicapped people. I have a handicap placard and an absence of legs and an arm that says I can do that. So it's okay. I do, I'm not making fun of handicapped people. I love them, even though they freak me out. You <laughs> if they did look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, every day. I just can't. But anyway, so Nick even has a shirt on right now yes. that's the handicap symbol, and it says "That's how I roll." Yeah, under it. <laughs> exactly. You gotta have fun with it. I don't make it my identity. I'm not like I wake up every morning I'm like I'm disabled, <laughs> but you know, it's just it's it's something that that you you deal with. So if I make those jokes, I don't want your hate mail. Don't make fun of disabled people. Be like, well, you don't make fun of disabled people. You're doing it right now when you email me, you jerk. Any um, emails. Uh, I've yes, been vamping we actually, here. We actually do have one. Really? Um, this is from uh, the Gmail team. All right, Gmail team. Oh, sorry. oh, here's the email jingle. Read an email coming at you. Read Okay, go. <laughs> it says, Gmail's inbox puts you in control. Ooh, we like to be in control That's on this right. show. Meet the inbox. Gmail's inbox sorts your email into categories so you can see what's new at a glance. <laughs> Decide which emails you want to read, when, and view similar types of emails together. You can watch the video. Ooh. They, they linked a video. They linked a video. <laughs> well, wonders never cease. <laughs> Choose your categories. <laughs> the social and promotions categories are on by default. Oh, good. Add categories like updates and forums or remove categories to have those emails show up in your primary inbox. Mm. Well, super duper. Yes. You can also customize your I inbox. I cannot. You, you lie. Can. If you see a message you want in a different category, you can move it there. On mobile devices, you can even choose which categories create a notification. Oh, <gasps> And you, they put another link in here that's for more customization tips. Well, bum, 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 that's pretty cool. And if you want to learn any more about Gmail's inbox, you can check out the Help Center or watch the video. Mm. Happy emailing the Gmail team. Now, let's be honest. That is probably the first time in a long time that anybody's ever read that. <laughs> I mean, think about it. For, <laughs> for as much, real, for as much as, like, delete. Yeah, Gmail sends <laughs> that out. When you make a Gmail account, everybody deletes it. We just read it. So there you go, Gmail team. Somebody read your email. <laughs> and that's what you want when you're listening to a podcast about Star Wars Rebels. That's right. It's a couple of guys reading the Gmail default greeting email. That's right. Which so what, that's what you're going to get. That's right. So you better write some real emails and make that segment more interesting. It's up to you. The choice is yours. That's right. Because we, we will continue to read trash mail if you don't. <laughs> we'll continue to read trash. <laughs> some dude it up, egg sucking gutter trash. trash. That's back to the future reference number two. That's right. Quick quiz. What movie is that from, people? I mean, which one? Which one? <laughs> I'm more well, like back, back to the future. <laughs> yes, but part three. That's right. Ha ha. Yeah. Okay, so. Shall we begin then? Let's do it. All right. So our first episode that we're going to be covering is a princess on Lothal mm -hmm. or Lothal. I don't know. Do people 
debate about the pronunciation. It's which I think it's one of those Star Wars things. Where I love it's it. Like we just pronounce it how we feel like. Just today. like in Episode Seven, is it Jakku or is it Jakku? Yeah. You know, in the same scene, people say it differently. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a tradition. Mm-hmm. Naboo, Naboo. You know, mm-hmm. Did you know Mustafa? there is another Skywalker? Sly. Yes, yeah. I've heard. I think it's Leia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the tragedy of Darth Plagueis? Yes. <laughs> you know oh, the tragedy. tragedy. <laughs> oh, um, there is another slight reference to um, the prequels in Episode Seven. Oh, really? There is. Um, but I don't know that you can actually see it, or if it's in a deleted scene. Okay. Um, but the uh, the the design team. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually put a person in costume mm-hmm. and the costume was a Naboo senator. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. What I'm figuring is this one of, might be one of those people in the crowd there yeah, that gets yeah. blown up. Yeah. Uh, on the on with, Hosnian uh, Prime. Hosnian Prime. Yeah. yeah. So like Optimus's weird snotty cousin <laughs> Hosnian. Sounds like something nose related. It does. Kinda. Hosnian Prime. <laughs> Probably because of snozberry. <laughs> I don't know, you know. It tastes like snozberry. That's right. It'll lick a pineapple. It tastes like a pineapple. It'll lick a snozberry. It tastes like a snozberry. <laughs> Josh loves that that book because that guy was killing kids. He was. He was straight up killing. Willy Wonka was a murderer. <laughs> straight up killing him. Do you ever see those people again? Nope. Because mm. he killed them all. <laughs> Gene Wilder loved it. <laughs> now, I don't know how much, because I think I've seen the Johnny Depp one once, mm-hmm. but I've seen the Gene Wilder one a, a lot. A bunch, yeah. And Gene Wilder, I mean, you've seen the meme. Oh, yeah. You know, the picture where he's, he's like, like leaning mm-hmm. on his yeah. hand, and he's like, tell me about your future. <laughs> like, 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 and stuff like that. Um, he he enjoyed it. He enjoyed killing the kids. <laughs> See, this is what you're going to get on the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. So, uh, Princess on Lothal. Right. Lothal. Lothal. Uh, however however you want to say it. There's something else, because you're talking about Hosnian Prime, you're talking about that. Oh, should we mention very briefly, uh, give our reactions to the fact that Episode 8 has been delayed. You know, it was oh, going to yeah. come out in the summer of 2017. That kind of disappoints me. Me too. Now it's in December. Yeah. Um, and the reason, have you heard the rumors about why, that it was like for rewrites yeah. to include... Like more Ray and Finn, and you know, focus on the characters from Episode Seven more. Ah. Which that's kind of, if that rumor's true, that's a little disconcerting. I'm like, so you weren't, you weren't gonna planning <laughs> on that a whole lot? <laughs> like you introduce your main characters and you're not gonna show them a lot. Well, I know that they've talked about with Episode Eight that there's gonna be uh, you know several new characters right in that movie, and uh, you know, it, to me, even when they would say you know so and so got cast, mm. and you like. Um, uh, Benicio del Toro, right. I think, is one of I think the. That, I know he was at least rumored. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like okay, you're introducing a lot of a lot of characters and everything that are that are played by you know kind of semi big actors right. or whatever. You're probably going to want to spend time on them, but what does that mean for my other characters? Exactly. And then we get this about the mm-hmm. rewrites thing, and we're like, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a little it's a little messed up that it's like you weren't planning on doing it, but at least yeah. people's positive reaction to the characters in episode seven has made them say, oh wait, yeah, maybe we should focus on this. Like, yeah, that'd be kind of like yeah. <laughs> it's like we got episode four and it's Han, Luke, and Leia, and then in the new movie it's all about Lando or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like yeah, bring Lando in, bring Boba Fett in, mm-hmm. but but keep it about the main characters. Why introduce them? If they're not going to be the driving force. Right. So, yeah, get it, force? No. <laughs> uh, you know, driving force. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then one other rumor um, that we all talk about, I've been seeing recently, and it relates to Rebels, is, have you heard this rumor about Thrawny Thrawn? No. Uh, apparently, the the rumor going round uh, is that in Season 3, Thrawn is going to show up. As in Grand Admiral Thrawn. As in, you okay. know, that guy. So... Um, and I mean, it, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because I mean, okay, he's canon, but that won't mean right. the heir to the Empire is well, canon. See, and then we're going to have to deal with that. Canon. Like, like that's one thing, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm sorry if you're this kind of Star Wars fan, mm-hmm. but that's one thing that I, I, I really get annoyed with with people on the internet is anytime th- seeing things like this happen, mm-hmm. That you know, where an EU character is brought in, yeah. they automatically think that well, the now then that story that involved right. him in the EU is canon. It's like, it's like no, no, it's not. Never has been that mm-hmm. way. No, like when they brought Quinlan Voss 
into the Clone Wars. That doesn't suddenly mean every Quinlan Vos yeah. story really happened. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Ala Secura in Episode Two. Right. Uh, it just it just means that well, in the case of those instances, George liked that design of that character mm-hmm. and wanted to include that you know in in the film yep. uh, and then in in Clone Wars. Uh, so, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean. So, I guess we're gonna have to bring the hammer out again. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, so. <laughs> if you're not familiar with it, folks, um, back in the, the the as we said earlier, we weren't huge fans of the EU, and so back during our Clone Cast days, when when this sort of thing would happen, of the Clone Wars would kind of mess with the EU. Yeah. Um, people would get all upset and fired up. <coughs> and, Karen Travis. <laughs> Mandalorian. <laughs> and so what did we do about that? We laughed. No. <laughs> well, yeah, we did. Um, but since we had always had the perspective that the EU is its own separate thing mm-hmm. and is not to be considered official, um, then we weren't upset when these things happen. And yep. again, from a personal standpoint, it always seemed to be the case that the real George Lucas slash Dave Filoni Mm -hmm. slash canon version of something we liked better than its EU counterpart. So we weren't like, well, you know, I knew it wasn't canon, but I liked it better than what they did. No, it was always the case that, oh, George's take, that's good. So anyway, the point being that we weren't upset about it. We kind of enjoyed it. And so we had... The hammer, which we we that was our way of referring to when the Clone Wars would seemingly purposefully say, "Nope, EU, that ain't how it happened." Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like when when they, I mean, because I mean, they have a, a huge pool to oh, draw yeah. from, exactly. like characters, mm-hmm. ship design, stuff like that that oh, yeah. they don't have to fool with. Like, exactly, we don't have to fool with coming up with this character. Now we can come up with our spin on this right, character, but, but we don't have to get them from the ground ground up. Or hey. Right. I want a ship. Let me go to the Central Guide to Vehicles and Vessels, drawn by Doug Chang. Right. And uh, you can get one in my in my living room. I got it on my bookshelf. Me too. Uh, yeah, right there. And so you could get it, and you could look at it, and boom, there's a ship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that that's the thing. There's all this great potential mythology and stuff that's mm-hmm. there. Um, it's just taking it and using it. Right. And then putting your new real spin on it. It's like yeah. with the Mandalorians. Right. I mean, Josh kind of, I, I don't know if you caught this, but he mentioned Karen Travis. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, she had her whole take on the Mandalorians. And then, then the, the Clone Wars comes up. And in fact, this may have been where it started. I think this is where I our talking was. about the hammer started was in the Mandalorian show up and they're all pacifists. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, the show even acknowledged that, in the real canon, the Mandalorians had been violent in the past, and mm-hmm. some of them still were. But nonetheless, it was like this focus on they're trying to be peaceful now, and they they are being peaceful now. And so it was a situation where the George Lucas take on it we found more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, by the way, of course, that means that when Disney made the announcement, Disney slash Lucasfilm you know, made the announcement that going forward all the eu stuff was going to be rebranded as legends and basically mm-hmm. was going to not continue and that now television shows films and books and comics and this mm-hmm. that and the other would all be a part of the main canon we were not upset no and we were not surprised because like this is nothing new except for they're just stopping making new things in the old yeah. EU, and now the book stuff will get to be a part of the main canon. Yeah, the only concern I have about that is, especially with the books, where you have a lot of different writers that yeah. are that, that are submitting book ideas mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You have the 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 increased possibility of basically contradictions, right? Yeah, um, and you know that, and and you know you're gonna have. Like a, a writer who is whose style is mm-hmm. odd. I mean, like yeah. a lot of people have have criticized that uh, Chuck Wendig guy, yeah, um, the guy that wrote Aftermath, yeah, for his supposedly terrible writing style. I haven't read the book, so yeah. I don't know. Right, um, but you know, it you're gonna have things like that mm-hmm. that is it's. That it's like no matter what you say, it's like that's that's canon now. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, like you can't just say, well, no, that's EU. It, yeah, you can't say, well, that you know, that's EU, so it doesn't count anyway. Yeah. So that I mean, can be some, a terrible book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like somebody that can have or just have some weird wonky idea about something. Yeah. But the story group is okay with it, and then yeah. it sort and of that's probably its way like in. our our best hope is, is the story is group. the story group, yeah. and you know the people who are involved with that. So mm. you know those people, you know, I fairly well trust. To, to try, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Pablo Hidalgo, yeah. and if Dave's in it, Dave, and yeah. some of these others. And that's the thing; it does seem like sort of the brain trust uh, for Star Wars right now sort of 
I don't know how to put this except say that it seems like they get it. And by get it, I mean it being George Lucas's v- vision or view of Star Wars. Yeah, right. Um, and well, and it's like Pablo Hidalgo worked with yeah. George Lucas on Clone Wars. Yeah. So it's like, and what what I actually thought was interesting is I read somewhere maybe it was um, maybe it was in the the art of the Force Awakens mm-hmm. book. I'm not sure, but uh, it was somewhere where. JJ said that one of his things that one of his regular things to do was if he had an idea mm. story wise, he would check with uh, Pablo first yeah. to find out, you know, can we do this? Right. Is this going to contradict anything? Yeah. And I was like, well, good on you, JJ, exactly. for actually caring. Yeah. Um, and that's where we're going to going to have the potential for problems is if, if somebody all of a sudden comes along that doesn't care. Right. Exactly. Because, you know, going back to the sort of imagery from earlier, the analogy from earlier, there are boundaries that inside is star Wars and outside is not George Lucas expanded those boundaries from what people thought they were. But Mm -hmm. nonetheless, I mean, there are certain things that just are not going to fly in the star Wars universe. Um, Even if they are officially considered Canon they just they just wouldn't you know you just wouldn't work so right. that is the concern is those things sort of getting in and then once they're in they're in yep. and then you have to try to either accept it or if they try to retcon it out then it starts to feel like the EU where it's like oh well that story that was told about Boba Fett was it actually more, happened this, this way, way. <laughs> and, it, and the the person that that explained it that that was a legend that was told <laughs> right. of Boba you know that sort of way of where you're like I know what you're doing book <laughs> you're right. I know exactly what you're doing book and it's obvious mm-hmm. so yeah I think I think time will tell yeah um when it comes to that this is definitely that that this transitionary time period for Star Wars mm-hmm. where we're going from basically one guy being the filter, if not yeah. the source of everything, yeah. um, to a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And so so we'll we'll kind of see how it see how it goes. But yeah. but yeah, I have no problem with the idea of Thrawn in no. the Clone Wars. Um it it'll be then a question of, okay, what's the real Thrawn's backstory? What is yeah. his deal? Because maybe he is, you know, from Chiss. And the or Chiss ascendancy and all that. I mean, maybe that's that's part of it, but maybe not. And mm-hmm. we'll see, you know. And I don't think they'll be East Alamiri. There better not be. <laughs> but you know, it'll it you know time will time will tell on that. Um, there related to that, I was um on Facebook. I think it was the you know there's several different Star Wars official pages like Star Wars books and Star Wars Star Wars and Star Wars this. Mm-hmm. And I think it may have just been Star Wars. Um, and they had a. It was about Rebels though. It was. Um, the no no it was about episode seven it was basically where the new planets are Tekodina and oh, okay. Jakku and all of that and in talking about one of them they're like if you go this way through the mid rim and out there this one's kind of out there and it's kind of out far only thing that's kind of in that area is Zenoma Sekat which if you remember Zenoma Sekat or Sekat I don't know how you say it yeah. it was apparently a Yuzhan Vong thing like it was a planet oh, okay. there was an entire like life form. Well, I only am familiar with it because of it was in uh, was it Rogue Planet was that the name of it? It was an Obi Wan and Young Anakin book. Okay, um, and they go to this planet and do something, but it tied into the Yuzhan Vong. Uh-huh. Uh, and so a couple people were like, "Wait, so that means an almost Sea God is canon now?" Yeah, you know. And so it's that's a question. Well, but I even mean, if it is, that doesn't all that means is there's a planet named Zenoma Seacott. That's all we officially then know. Yeah, we don't like we were saying we don't know the backstory. Doesn't mean that Yuzhan Vong are real. It just means here's a planet with that name. Well, apparently the Clone Wars intended to uh, bring in the Yuzhan Vong at some point. Yeah, but uh, you know, got canceled before yeah. that happened. And that's interesting because if that had happened, then it's like okay, well George is saying that's a thing. Okay, yeah. I guess it's a thing. I guess it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and and from from us, from our perspective, it is going to be a little bit more difficult going forward that you don't have the singular George Lucas who created Star Wars saying, you know, let's put this in. And then we go, well, OK, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it's like we can be like, yeah, the story group said it's OK. Mm-hmm. All right. But it's like still that's a little bit different from George. I, for me, anyway, yeah. I feel like there's going to be some level. Well, he's introducing it into the canon that he created. Exactly. So whereas, it's. A, it, whereas now you're going to have people introducing things into canon that somebody else somebody created. Somebody else created, right, exactly. And there's just some level on which it's not going to feel exactly the same. Right. So, uh, it, but we will see. Yeah. But in this episode, mm-hmm. they introduced Leia, 
a princess mm-hmm. onto the fall. Canonically, this is the first time we ever see Leia. Yes, exactly. At least la, I think. La, 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 Unless there's a book somewhere. I don't think there are any new books that would deal with her. There's a Leia comic, but I don't know if it I, takes place around that time frame. I don't yeah. think it does because I want to say that in discussing this episode, like on Rebels Recon and things like that, they kind of made a deal about how we had to sort of figure out where Leia was at this point. Oh, okay. So, um, kind of works out well. Yeah. And so where is she? She's on a mercy mission mercy this time. Mercy mission. Yeah, remember when, when Vader <laughs> says, you weren't on any mercy mission this time? Apparently, this is the sort of thing that he's referring to. <laughs> yeah. Although, again, it wasn't a mercy mission. Even here, that was the cover story. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, shall we talk about the episode? Let's do it. All right, here we go. There's no fortune cookie, so... <laughs> yeah, the, the cookie cannot talk. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and t- talk about that first, Okay. about Rebels. Is the opening and closing yes. of Rebels are terrible? Horrible. <laughs> Like, because there is no opening and closing. It's just like, here's the Rebels. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> when the show starts and some things are happening, and then at some point we're going to cut to Stars and the Rebels title screen. <laughs> yeah. And it used to be that we would go, oh, here's the Rebels. And right. now they don't even do that anymore. <laughs> nope. It's like, maybe it'll be a continuation of the music from the scene. Maybe it'll be nothing. You don't know. <laughs> and then the ending. It's like it, it it sets itself perfectly yeah. all up to iris out mm. and then and like but no no you don't get that at all it's like when we're watching the protector of concord dawn i'm going to call it concord down several times because <laughs> i have a real problem with that it's like thinking fourth dimensionally uh, that's number but, three yes from number, number three Two and three. He does it in both. Yeah. Right. Definitely no, no, does just, just three. Just three. Just You're three. not thinking fourth dimensionally. Yeah, I have a real problem with that. Which he says in 1885, right. first time was in 55. Yeah. It's the Indians. I'm going to crash right into those Indians. <laughs> <laughs> the Indians won't even be there. <laughs> but, but so. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Love that movie. It's such a good movie. Oh, we've seen it in the yep, theater. We have. Yeah. By ourselves. By ourselves. You and me. Could have made out. So <laughs> when we're watching Concord Dawn and that one especially, it's mm-hmm. like the music starts to ramp up to nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's like leaving me hanging, show. Yeah. I just, I just don't understand yeah. the... They should really fix that at some point. For, for as much as Star Wars has certain structural conventions mm-hmm. and as much as they're a part of Star Wars, like, yeah. you know, you don't end a Star Wars movie with talking. It's a scene without talking and there's music and then Iris is out and it always begins with the... And then you got the crawl and there's certain things. And wipes. J.J. Abrams, wipes. Wipes. There was a few, but there was uh, many places there should have been wipes and there weren't. But anyway, yeah. if we're going to be consistent. But the point is that, yeah, so you have all of this and then Rebels is like, well, let's just throw the title screen right here. Yeah. <laughs> Is like that. That's actually one thing that I wonder about about the uh, the anthology movies or yeah. the a Star Wars story movies. Right. Like, what are they gonna do? Yeah. Like, in my personal opinion, here's what you do: mm-hmm. you start them and end them just like normal Star Wars. They just movie. don't have an they, episode time. Exactly. Yeah. But I know they're not gonna do that. Yeah. They're gonna do something different. Mm-hmm. But it's like. If you keep the serialized feel of Star Wars, it's mm-hmm. like that's what you need. Yeah, exactly. You need something that feels serial. Mm-hmm. Um, the Clone Wars had that. Yeah. Like they didn't have a crawl. They had uh, uh, D. Bradley Baker, I think it was. Tom Kane. Tom Kane? Yeah. Okay. Um, Yoda. Yeah. Yoda. They, <laughs> they had Yoda. They had Yoda <laughs> narrating what would be in the crawl. Exactly. But it was done like an old. Uh, like an old war serial, yeah, yeah. like where you know, you're like, the fight with the Johnny, right in there. Yeah, I mean, it, you had Willie Ullarn sitting on the pot reading the thing, right? <laughs> and then you know you had the iris out, mm. and then you had the credits, yeah. just like a normal Star Wars yeah. uh, thing. Music was rearranged, yeah. but still, yeah. yeah. And it's like there, there just needs to be something to make it feel serial. It's like, yeah. like don't like what i'm afraid of like with rogue one it's like cuz that's supposed to be a little bit more of a hard-edged yeah, war story movie war. like i'm looking forward to it but that that part of it is like i have a feeling like some of the 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 star wars things mm. that that or at least uh, thematically need yeah. to happen are like not, that yeah are just yeah they're probably going to like they're going to church it up a little bit yeah, and like, be like well, and it, and it's a dark star wars mm, movie it's not mm. a dark star wars movie <laughs> Like no, 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 yeah. Well, it's, it's just like with episode, and by episode, I mean the Star Trek movies. <laughs> with the Star Trek movies, I always wanted there to be consistency in opening and closing, mm-hmm. and 
if nothing else in the music. And the only time that happened was when they would get Jerry Goldsmith to, to score a movie because yeah. you, like all of Jerry Goldsmith's next generation movies, as well as uh, episode, uh, episode, Oh, <laughs> Star Trek five, uh-huh. undiscovered country. They all end with the Alexander Courage fanfare going into his main Star mm-hmm. Trek theme, going into the usually theme with from, a pan up. Yeah, exactly. Of the camera. So there was musical and even some visual continuity. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember, I guess it was when I was watching Insurrection, because um, it had happened in First Contact, but then First Contact, the First Contact, First Contact, <laughs> but then it happened again in Insurrection. And in Insurrection, I'm like, there you go. That's how you do it. Uh-huh. Consistency, something that's sort of again motif type of of situation there. So right. Rebels, it's like eh, whatever, whatever, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Episodes over, gone. I, on the one hand, it mm. gives more time for. An episode, yeah, that's because, true. Because uh, Disney is not very, uh, um, uh, how would you say it, generous on giving yeah. them runtime. Exactly. There you go. Well, they got to do their commercials for their own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, why do why do I care? It's like, show me that in between. Exactly. So, I was like, I don't need you to stop my show to tell me about another show that you've got coming on. No, Labrax is going to be on later. I don't care. <laughs> Are you going to start replaying um, uh, uh, Good Luck Charlie? <laughs> Are you going to start replaying uh, uh, Kim Possible? Are you going to make new DuckTales? Okay, maybe I care about those things, but even then. I thought they were going to make new DuckTales. Where is it? I don't, I don't know, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like two years ago we heard about that. Well, it takes a while to put the D and the U and the C and the K all together. <laughs> But yeah, it's supposedly going to happen, so okay. we'll, we'll see. But it's like even that stuff, I'd be like, just just in the episode, in the show, and then I know why they do it. They're like, well, you won't watch. It's like I might, I probably won't, but I might. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when when Disney Channel didn't have commercials. Uh, me too. Yeah. And then I remember when Disney Channel said we're going to start having commercials, and I'm watching. I'm like, but it's just a commercial for some of your other show of yours. <laughs> yeah. But it don't even make any sense. <laughs> Stop it! Quack! I don't like the things in commercials that take me away from a show, but you're being the thing that's giving me the show and taking me away from the show. Right. Now I'm conflicted about you. I don't... It's like a love-hate thing. I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. It's, it's, it's like Rachel and Ross. I love Ross, I hate Ross, I love Ross, I hate Ross. <laughs> this is very, very intense. Yeah. So, so let's talk Leia, about this episode. Leia shows up. <laughs> All right, so... Following the events of Legacy, what's mm-hmm. the big thing to take away from Legacy when it comes to Ezra and his parents? Mm-hmm. Um, they did. They did. They did. They gone. Yeah. So, so no, no parents for Ezra, which mm-hmm. of course you know is difficult. But you're a Star Wars hero. That sometimes happens. Yep. So, Kane and Jarrus talks with Harrison Dula via hologram about Ezra Bridger and Chopper and their recent adventure on Lothal. Uh, while Ezra has learned that his parents, Ephraim and Mira Bridger, um, getting some getting more Jewish names up in the <laughs> joint here, um, had died, the rebels had been able to find a new ally in the form of Savage Opress. Uh, yeah, uh, Savage Opress or um, um, the bad guy from Highlander. Bad guy from Highlander. <laughs> um, the, the, well, the Kurgan. Yeah, the that Kurgan. Or um, um, the, um, the, the, the chief guard from Shawshank Prison. Yeah, yep. that's right. <laughs> yep, exactly. Or Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs? From Spongebob. Oh, I've never watched Spongebob. Well, there's a crab know. and he owns a, a, a burger joint. Oh, yeah, okay. I know who you're talking about. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's Clancy Brown, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Clancy Brown just everywhere. He's everywhere. Yes. But he's also Ryder Azadi. Mm-hmm. Not Ryder Strong. Ryder Azadi. <laughs> yeah, because Ryder Strong is Corey's best friend. Right. Uh, Ryder Azadi, the former governor of Lothal. Hera informs Kanan uh, that Senator Bail Organamon has <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's you know a, a little bit more Jamaican, Jamaican in the, in the like, Clone Wars. No, no. <laughs> I like you, but turn the Jamaican down. <laughs> turn that Jamaican down, would you please? Bob Send- Marley's not cutting it in here. That's right. <laughs> Bob Marley's not cutting the grass. All I hear is steel drums and amen. <laughs> and I want it to stop. <laughs> Cultural insensitivity. That's what you get here on... 
Except that it's not. Because no, it's true. It's true. It's <laughs> like, that's usually what Jamaican music sounds like. I, I, I went to grad school with a guy from Jamaica, and he talked a little bit like that. I mean, he wasn't yeah. like smoking weed. <laughs> so we, we were getting master's degrees in, in theology, but nonetheless, <laughs> you know, his name was Junior. Like the, yeah. the typical, you know, stereotypical name for a guy from Jamaica, Junior. That was his name. Huh. Yeah. So sometimes stereotypes exist because they're real. Yeah. That's true. You know, it's like, I love Dr. Pepper, and I live in the South. Huh. Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> Go fish. So, Senator Bail Organa has heard about the Phoenix uh, cell mm-hmm. and their issues uh, with uh, because of their losses on Garel, and they have sent an agent to deliver more ships to them. Uh, so, mm-hmm. ju- this is just interesting. Uh, you know, obviously, there was thought that maybe this is the kind of thing we would get in Rebels, but we didn't get it in season one. We're now getting it, you know, in season two. This notion of how this Rebel Alliance really got going. Mm-hmm. What is it? Wait, I was just, I just had a, just go ahead. I okay, had a, I, I had, had a, a funny, vision. I had a funny thought in okay. my head, okay. but it had nothing to do with Star Wars. Oh, but so go ahead. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, used to he would just talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be good, maybe. So. What I was saying, Joshua, was yeah. that you know, in season one, we thought maybe we would get it, but we didn't until season two. And that is sort of seeing how the Rebel Alliance kind of logistically gets off the ground. I mean, how how does this work? It's like episode four. It's like, you're part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. You know, and then there's a yeah. base. But that's kind of, we know there's an alliance and we know there's a base and we know that Leia is a traitor and mm-hmm. she smelled his foul stench. Right. Um, and so in this show we're now getting to sort of see how they're coming together and working together mm-hmm. and, and building it up and so bail organa being rich because he's a senator stinky politician right you know he can get ships and divert them uh and and we see here how this kind of thing would have happened how the rebels got some of their hardware mm-hmm. yeah we've seen uh earlier we saw earlier uh in the season mm-hmm. uh where uh harry gets the b-wing yeah and uh so and it's like she gets one mm-hmm to take to a place to have it mass produced. Right. Um, and we were talking about that earlier, uh, or, or while we were watching, uh, the Sabine episode, mm. the Mandalore episode. Um, Josh calls it Sabine cause he like her. That's right. But not her hair color. <laughs> no, her hair color is stupid this season. Go back to the other. <laughs> but, uh, we talked about, you know, wonder when we're going to start seeing the X wings. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I imagine that will probably be a thing, a thing in that show is like, you know, okay, well now we got to, Get the the greatest fighter in the galaxy. Yes. Yeah, um, because as you said when we were talking about it, you're like, well, they've got the slowest piece of garbage. Yeah, the Y wings. Y wings, and then they've got the super fast ship, mm-hmm. the A wings. Mm-hmm. It's like, but where's your? And the B wings are coming. Yeah, the B wings are coming, but they, <laughs> but really they shouldn't be there until Return of the Jedi. <laughs> That's true, because we never like like why didn't okay but why <laughs> yeah see see like okay they've got they've got A wings now. Mm-hmm. Like, why didn't they use no A wings on the, the the trench run? Yeah, because A wings would have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah. because they. Would, I mean, we know why. We know. I mean, we, I mean because they hadn't they designed hadn't them, designed them yet. But <laughs> but but from a plot standpoint, yeah, yeah, because they're fast, they could avoid the turbo lasers. Yeah, uh, but but maybe, and B wings probably would have been better suited. Yeah, for uh, the the trench run. Because they could have just flown above the trench and shot the torpedo <laughs> exactly down into the hole. Because it's not like proton torpedoes cannot be launched from an A wing. Right, they can. So yeah, what's in up fact, with that? every rebel ship that there is can shoot a it can shoot a torpedo. I think that's right. Yeah. So, so why do they have to do it with X? There's gonna be an, <laughs> th- th- there's gonna be an episode of Rebels towards the end where the whole point of the episode is we done had all of our A wings blow up. Right. <laughs> It'll We're probably be more. about four years before we get any more. <laughs> and they would be like, they saw that problem. <laughs> they listened to our first episode of Rebels cast and they were like, oh yeah, we got Dave Filoni's like, yeah, we got to we got Josh and Nick pointed this out, we got to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And Pablo Adal goes like, yeah, let's get on it. Did they talk about how wonderful I am again? Yeah, they did, Pablo. Okay, that's good. They mentioned you. Yeah, they did a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, and Simon Kinberg's like, what about me? We, we just mentioned you, Simon, so calm right. down. <laughs> but maybe that's what'll happen, because yeah. the A-Wings, yeah. What's yeah, up with that? Be. Again, X-Wing TIE Fighter nerds. Uh, yeah. 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 So, and what they need to get is the gunboats. Still, oh, yeah. Still a gunboat. I'm wondering if that's ever going to show up. Ah, they need to. Yeah. Because I did like the gunboat. Gunboat was sweet. Yeah. Much better than a TIE Fighter. Oh, yeah. Where you have no shields and will die. Yeah. Very quickly. 
but it was only as fast as a tie bomber yeah unless you diverted power to mm, your engines exactly which i would always i would i would have to do that some but then i have to i have to divert power to my lasers because otherwise i blow through it too quickly uh, yeah you know that's true power generation maintenance and balance very important in stub fighting very important yes so above the planet of the fall <laughs> right <laughs> Three unidentified cruisers Mm -hmm. appear out of hyperspace and are intercepted by a light cruiser. Imperial Lieutenant Yager Listy. Yager. Yager. Let's go get hammered, (laughs) Yager. Who was kind of a bit of a tool, but I guess you have to be. Can I say that? Can I say tool? Um, Is is his mom listening? Is she going to be upset that I called her son a tool? I guess you have to be one to be an imperial, you know, kind yeah. of middle manager guy. Yeah. Because he's all like, you don't even have a passcode. And then, the, right. and then one guy's like, passcode's coming in now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have waited like three seconds for I open my snooty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, sir. Maybe so. Um, so he demands to know the identities and the purpose of the cruisers due to the rebel activity on Lothal, uh, forcing the Emperor to cut off access to the planet. The cruisers respond by saying they are giving relief aid, mercy mission, mm-hmm. to the people of Lothal and are identified as Alderania, and Leia Organa is accompanying them. Uh, satisfied by Leia's explanation, listy or list or how you, Jagermeister, uh, <laughs> said, the Jagermeister <laughs> says that they can land. So do you think that he suspects Mm-hmm. that she is a traitor. Because early on, I'd kind of wondered the way he was being all snooty about, oh, you're blah, blah, blah. But then the rest of the episode, it yeah, seems like, no, I that's, think he Yeah, that's kind of the way her. I felt about it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I mean... Maybe, maybe he it, should. Yeah, maybe he should, yeah. Because he's like, your ships have a bad habit of being stolen by rebels. Because <laughs> yeah. um, you give them to them. I think it might be, there might be a slight suspicion, but mm. but nah. Yeah, and he also seems like he's not sort of intelligent and and sort of independently. Yeah, thinking he's definitely not enough, a smart guy. Yeah, to, to sort of piece it together. <laughs> yeah, and be like, wait a minute, you know, she could have had her friend shoot her with that stun gun there at the end of the episode, and and and, and, and it still could they could be in cahoots. <laughs> it's possible, I guess, maybe. <laughs> yeah maybe so maybe so yeah so but I think it's good that you don't want suspicion on Leia to happen too early right you know? uh, but there needs to be hints of it so that Vader could be like you know you weren't on any mercy mission this time you're part of the rebel alliance and a traitor I've known mm-hmm. it for a while daughter of mine daughter of mine and so there you go um, any any comments no. on, on that alright so back at Ryder Azadi's hideout Kanan and Ezra so you've got this, you really do kind of have this Jedi Padawan kind of thing going now. And I think for me going forward, one of my sort of recurring subjects or points of interest is this whole way in which I'm divided over the Jedi showing up at this point in the story. Uh-huh. You know, that it's like, we've got Jedi and look, there's Jedi over here. And, you know, in the Concord Down episodes, like, oh, you're a Jedi. Yeah. And it's like, but there's kind of this vibe in which they need to not be doing stuff because yeah. of the whole we've got a Jedi now in episode four yeah we're, we're really even five and six and mainly six even so right it's just yeah it, it, on one hand it's like it makes for cool right now viewing yeah exactly but like when when uh when fit into the canon mm-hmm. it's kind of like yeah oh, well yeah but yeah. They, they ain't supposed to be around no more. I mean, of course, you know, you, you know, there's always the possibility right. that Kanan could die. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you know, you see that character like that, and you don't want him to die. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's kind of like with Ahsoka. Yeah, it's like you know, we figured, you know, well, Ahsoka's not gonna or is not around in Episode Three, so maybe she's dead. Right. But um, then, as the show goes on, it's like, I hope I, they don't I, kill Ahsoka. Yeah, <laughs> like Ahsoka. Yeah. <laughs> but and then they found a way around it that totally worked. Oh yeah. But. I, still, I think she's going to die this season. Think so? I think so. I think when it, when she fights Darth Vader, I think yeah. Darth Vader's going to kill her. Yeah. And that's going to be heavy stuff. Yeah. That's real, real super heavy. Because that's the thing. It's like Ahsoka can survive Order 66 because there's like 17, 18, 19 years worth of Star Wars timeline that nothing has covered, mm-hmm. essentially, of note. And so there's no sense in which it's going to be stepping on anything's toes. Mm-hmm. But now we're a few years up on episode four, in which case things have to feel a certain way and things right. have to be going a certain way. Mm-hmm. But I think you're exactly right. In the short term, it's fun to watch Jedi again, but sort of looking at it from a long-term overall story integrity standpoint, it's like, 
I almost feel well, like we're doing the thing that's fun in the moment and we're yeah. doing it by sacrificing story integrity a little bit. Cause like you would think, you know, you, you look at the, at, at the Jedi thing as, as far as from Vader's point of view, post episode four. Yeah. It's like part of the reason that he wants to, or wants to get a hold of Luke so bad mm-hmm. is because yeah, that he knows that's his kid. Yeah. Or he suspects right. highly or something. But the other is because he's a Jedi. Mm-hmm. So I've either got to kill him or turn him or turn him. Exactly. Because and and the way he kind of does it is like, you know, like I'd killed all those guys. Mm-hmm. So he and he's a Jedi. I got to get I got to do something with yeah, him. Exactly. But he already knows that Kanan and Ezra exist. Right. Like, he's fought both of them. Yeah, exactly. Like he, so he's he, got to kill them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Exactly right, and it's it's kind of messed up if if it is we're giving you these characters to enjoy and then kill them. I have a feeling what they'll end up doing is they'll they'll once the show ends, mm-hmm. like then they'll do a book, yeah, and in like, the book they'll kill them. <laughs> page five of the book, they both die. It's like, yeah. huh? Well, I guess that had to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what they did with uh, I think it's what they did with uh, uh, what's her name. Oh, why am I blanking on her name? Catherine Janeway. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my coffee? Um. Oh, goodness. No cake. You know, uh, <laughs> bad villain lady in uh, in Clone Wars. You know, Asajj Ventress. Asajj Ventress. There thank you. Go. you. You're welcome. Um, like I don't know if it's her or if it's Quinlan Voss. Or or both of them, I don't know, but I think one of them dies hmm. in a book. Yeah, that that um, it's, it's canon yeah. now. Hmm. Um, but so I figure that's what they'll probably end up doing with Kanan right. and Ezra more yeah. than likely. I mean, but Ezra might become an Inquisitor or something yeah. like that. I mean, that would be sort of interesting if he goes in a different direction than you anticipate. Yeah, but but we'll see. But but so again, that's something we're gonna just have to kind of keep coming back to. Mm-hmm. But so here they are. Um, Ezra's lost his his parents. You know, Kanan is clearly trying to sort of be the comforter for him, um, and they are preparing uh, for the rendezvous. And let's see, uh, Kanan and Ezra prepare for the rendezvous and asks, "Who asks?" Wikipedia. Uh, they ask if it's they, then it should be ask with no s at the end. <laughs> Grammar Nazi. <laughs> uh, but they ask Ryder to go with them. He refuses, stating that he shouldn't be involved in rebel activity at all. He might get captured, he might get thrown into prison again, and Mm -hmm. he does not want to go to prison again. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I don't want to go to prison. (laughs) (laughs) At the moment, that's my best Nick Cage I can do. So, it wasn't very good at all. (laughs) (laughs) There's another one. (laughs) That's right. He does that a lot. He does that a lot. (laughs) My I'm crazy! (laughs) Uh, So, uh, at the garrison... Leia disembarks from one of the ships while Kanan and Ezra mingle in by using their disguises, which I think is interesting. It's like, oh, they'll never notice a couple of extra stormtroopers. Yeah. It's like, they won't? Boy, Lo- Lothal is poorly managed. Yeah, very. It's like, there's a, your TK-421 and your, t- your TK-472, and who are you? <laughs> and what's that little kid with you? But so so they show up, and, and Kanan sort of explains that you know to her that we're with the Rebellion, and mm-hmm. da, da, da. she's like, yeah, no. You know, put your helmet on, and otherwise you're going to get hurt or whatever. And she tells him, like, shut up or something. Yeah. And I was like, wow, Leia, you're being kind of cold. And Ezra's like, wow, well, Leia, you're being kind of cold. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of feeling a little bit like Ezra. I was like, yeah, what's what's up with Leia being yeah. Miss Prissy Pants? And then Kanan said something to Ezra to the effect of, you heard her, shut your mouth or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> okay, Kanan, I learned my lesson. Like, he was Jedi <laughs> schooling me a little bit because yeah. I, don't, I don't like the sass. <laughs> uh, from government officials and people who were in charge and so she was given the sass and mm-hmm. I was not liking it and he reminded me of the importance <laughs> of dealing with it yeah so, so uh, what, let, let's stop right here for a second okay and uh, collaborate what, and listen what do you think mm-hmm. of the person doing Leia's voice it's not bad I think it's pretty it, good it's, it's really not bad you know she has done the voice of Leia on uh, the Star Wars Uprising video game. Okay. Which I think was that tie-in with Tron. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then also she was the voice of Leia on Star Tours. Ah, okay. Uh, so apparently that's kind of how they they knew to get her. Uh-huh. But I thought she did a good job. Like when I when I first heard her in, um, 
is I think it was in the trailer hmm. for that episode. And uh, I was like, ah, I don't, she don't sound nothing like Leia. Hmm. But then actually seeing her in the in the episode, it kind of works better. Yeah, it works a lot better. There's a little bit of an awe to her voice yeah. tone that should be more of an uh tone. tone. Yeah, that makes yeah, no it sense. But it makes, makes sense, sense to me. Josh. Josh knows what I'm talking about. Shut up, y'all. Josh knows. Sometimes I yell at you, listeners. <laughs> but there's there's something about the the that 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 tone that again could have been, but still it it, it she did a good job. Yeah. What did you think of her design? Like her her look, her CG rendering. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, I mean, kind of like Lando. I mean, Lando's mm-hmm. done really well too. Um, but yeah. I think she, uh, I think also like slightly younger Leia has yes. kind of a, a Padme vibe a little bit mm-hmm. too. And that's um, fine. I mean, in both uh, design and personality. Yeah. Um, which I was really glad to see that. Mm-hmm. They're just like, oh, you're kind of being like your mommy yeah, a little bit. Exactly. Because this is a few years before episode four mm-hmm. and she's not very old in episode four. So, I mean, at this point she needs to be like. 15 16 17 yeah. you know i don't know what the official canon ages are if they if there are any yeah. but but she needs to be somewhere sort of in that spunky teenager late teenager right. kind of realm you know sort of a soca age yeah mm-hmm. uh, a little bit uh, and so it, it it again that's one of those things that's like this could have been done in a way that just felt like a tie in but they they did her character enough of a they had enough interesting things going on and did her well enough that it worked mm-hmm. i thought uh, and this is the only time she's going to be in the season, in the episode. Or the, this oh, episode okay. is her only appearance this season. Okay. They've said that explicitly. But, of course, that means... Well, that can mean that kind of works. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't, use those, don't use the characters that we know from the movies a whole lot. Yeah, exactly. The only one I could say use a lot mm-hmm. is Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and use him a lot. <laughs> yeah, use him a lot. Yeah. Um, but Because the thing is, even Lando, you don't want Lando to do too much mm-hmm. because you want Lando to kind of be mysterious and yeah. you know maybe we trust him maybe we don't in episode five yeah. you don't want him to be all buddy buddy with the rebels right but you can't establish that he doesn't like the empire mm-hmm. and I, I think we, we get that because yeah. uh, i want to view this whole thing mm-hmm. as like a and maybe some people might disagree with me but like i want to to view star wars as you start with episode one and you watch everything in chronological yeah, order. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, so I, I want the, the the reveals and stuff like that to still be impactful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, with using characters like that, you know, just willy-nilly. Yeah. It like, it kind of kills some that. of that. Yeah, exactly. Now, you can you can make a reveal have a different wrinkle. Sure. The way that, well, I mean, they did that with, with in Empire. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. The, the, oh my goodness, Luke's daddy is Darth Vader becomes Luke just found out that Anakin yeah. is Vader yeah. and his dad. So it, it has a different wrinkle, mm-hmm. but it's still a moment. Yeah. So now what do you think about them bringing in Akbar? Cause the Akbar is one of those characters. He wasn't in episode four or five. So on the one hand you could be like, he's a B wing. He should show up in episode six. And that's <laughs> yeah. it. On the other hand, it's like you could use Akbar a bunch and it wouldn't mess yeah. with anything. Yeah. That's fine. Like any, any like, you know, secondary characters mm-hmm. that they want to do that kind of stuff with that's fine like i'm even fine with them if they want to bring boba fett into the yeah. into rebels that's fine yeah um but uh you know our main cast you know uh han solo luke skywalker leia even to a certain extent obi-wan mm. is like i want them to use him but spare him. Yeah, don't use him a lot. Don't have him, like, hanging out at Rebel Alliance headquarters yeah, with no, Rex no, 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 and, no, no, no. you know, that, that, that other guy. No. Um, if he leaves Tatooine, it should be briefly. Yes. I mean, and he does a, have a job a, to do. Yeah, and for an important reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree completely. But um, but I think this this use of Leia works. Mm-hmm. Uh doesn't seem to be, uh, no. to be doing too much uh, or, or min- diminishing or minimizing anything. Okay, so let's see. Where were we? Um, Liz tells Leia that he is aware that her ships seem to get stolen by rebels quite frequently, and tells her uh, and and tells her that the Imperials will make sure that the Lothal rebels will be unable to steal them. Again, we, we sort of have a love hate relationship with the wording on Wikipedia. Yeah, but it is what it is. Um, well, why don't you rewrite it then if you think you're such hot stuff? Well, maybe I will. Maybe I will. <laughs> you don't know me. And I put on here, edited by Nick, because of that imaginary person listening to Rebels cast. You can play. 
Take that, imaginary person. <laughs> uh, let's see. He tells her that they are putting gravity locks on the ships. Well, really, he just tells her we're going to make sure that they're secure, and then we see them put the gravity mm-hmm. locks on. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like the boot on your car. Right. It means you can't be towed, <laughs> yeah. or you know, you can't drive off because you got too many parking tickets. Same kind of concept here. Um, and so there's those, as well as an attachment of stormtroopers around the area and two adats that are dropped in mm-hmm. from the sky yeah. which i'm like man that must have been a rough ride that that jolt <laughs> yeah. when they land right there it doesn't look like i got a lot of cushion in yeah, them legs <laughs> <laughs> so you need like some shock absorbers <laughs> yeah. or even just like just like you know duck you know like you yeah. know well like maybe like some some uh some thrusters in the bottom you know, yeah exactly of, this is like, like iron Z. man yeah just <laughs> iron man exactly fly like iron man or an eagle is you Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a uh, a joke that makes no sense to you, <laughs> to you listeners. <laughs> you have no clue. Okay, so they're like, well, then don't make it. Well, we oh can't God, help that. Just, There's no way. Work just, you're asking for silly <laughs> things now. Ridiculous stuff. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the deck officer, deck officer, uh, <laughs> begins to scan the ships for any contraband in the ships. You know, scanning crew, double, want them in here on the double. Mm-hmm. Every part of the ship check, same kind of thing. So those big boxes that apparently have scanning stuff in them. Yeah. Uh, Leia assures him that all of this is unnecessary, but he insists on doing so. Since her ships are grounded, she takes his Sentinel-class landing craft uh, so she can start on her relief work. Yeah. So the first time she takes his shuttle. Yes. And then at the end, she wants to take it again, but he lost it. Yeah. Because she lost him for him, <laughs> and she has to take another one. On the landing craft, Leia is disappointed that the Empire has stepped up security and wonders how the Rebels will be able to get them. Ezra asks why they didn't give the cruisers in deep space. So they're hanging a lampshade on the question. He's like, like, this whole episode doesn't need to happen. Just, <laughs> yeah. just give it to them in space. But she explains... That Alderaan will be subject, uh, suspected of being rebellious and traitorous, and that obviously would be yeah, bad. Can't have that. Yeah. If the rebels stole the ships on the planet controlled by the Empire, Alderaan would not be suspected for helping the rebel cause. Uh, so they go back to Ryder's hideout and find a group of stormtroopers arresting Ryder and Chopper. Kanan, disguised as a stormtrooper, talks with the leaders and offers to take them back to prison. And the officer that is to take uh, Kanan, asking me to take Ryder and Chopper back to prison. The officer tells them that they have orders to execute one of them, and then we go to commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, they they kind of gloss over it in here, but the conversation, isn't it here where they have the conversation about how, well, we don't know how we're going to, no, no, it's later. It's later. Never mind. They haven't glossed over anything yet. Because it, it's the conversation about, well, we can maybe get one, and Leia's like, don't show, tell me how you can't do it. Tell me how you can. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so I think that happens in a minute. Can't never could do a dang thing. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Tumble turd rolls down here. That's right. That's a, that's a my dad quote. That's, that's, that's a Houston quote right there. Uh, okay, so suddenly the ghost, that's the ship, you know, not the ethereal being. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's not the spirit. <laughs> that's not the spirit that shows up on his ghostly dinghy. <laughs> That's a Monkey Island reference, number sure. one. That's right. <laughs> Suddenly, the ghost appears and shoots at the Imperial transports before Zeb and Sabine disembark, and a brief skirmish begins. Leia tells Kanan and Ezra that she can't be seen running with them, or it would look suspicious, and so Ezra signals Sabine to let her and Zeb know that the stormtrooper and the cadet uh, from the knocked-out Imperial stormtrooper transport are them, <laughs> good grammar, and not the enemy. <laughs> Uh, so Leia tells Ezra to make it look authentic, so no suspicion will be aroused by the fighting stormtroopers, who then signals it to Sabine. Sabine tells Zeb, and Zeb is very excited because that means he gets to punch his friends. Right. And so... He's a very violent person. Very, he's a very, very, very violent, snarky man, really. <laughs> so the whole idea here being it will look like they're abducting Leia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so... Uh, he carries out the plan. Kane and Ezra allow Leia to be taken by Ryder. The other stormtroopers move in, but Kanan tells the officer that it was his responsibility to get Leia back from the rebels. Zeb then knocks Kane and Ezra out before dragging them into the ship. Uh, two of the fighting stormtroopers are surprised and wonder if the rebels are now starting to take prisoners. Because that was kind of funny. It's like, are they are they taking prisoners yeah. now? Are they doing that now? Yeah. Which is kind of funny because it ties in the next episode where yes, 
Yes, yeah, they are. They, they do take prisoners. Yeah. Uh, yes, they do. But, you know, it's nice prisoners. Yeah, nice prisoners. It's like, you know, hang out uh, here. Re- and reluctant TV. recruits. Exactly. Not <laughs> prisoners, Kanan but says. Lo- reluctant recruits. I noticed that Kanan's had a few good lines in, in some of these yeah. episodes. And this one, there's something about, like, oh, he says something to Leia, and it's kind of, I forgot what it was now. I should have written it down. <laughs> but he's kind of got a little bit of a, a, a you know, clever wittiness to some mm-hmm. of his of his speech these days which is obi-wan-ish kind of nice. yeah yeah a little obi-wan-ish a little of that kind of rueful wry mm-hmm. smile one side of the mouth kind mm-hmm. of thing uh and so i i'm liking that i'm enjoying his his funness uh there so let's see uh mm-hmm. meanwhile chopper has secured the fandom because that's what chopper does mm-hmm. by fandom i don't mean the ethereal being <laughs> <laughs> Might have to have two words as words of both being ghosts. <laughs> it's true. How does that work? I wonder if that was on purpose. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's just a fandom is a little ghost. <laughs> a little ghost. A little ghost. A baby ghost. A little baby ghost goes in the big ghost. It's like Transor Z or Voltron. <laughs> Tran- it's a Voltron ghost. Voltron ghost. <laughs> Lake Michigan is ghost. <laughs> That's a reference to the clone cast. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> uh, Go listen to it. <laughs> Go listen right now. We'll wait. Come back. Here you are. Okay, good. Wasn't that funny? <laughs> Meanwhile, Chopper secured the Phantom and loaded the auxiliary ship aboard the Ghost. Before leaving, he destroyed the landing craft that Listy or List had sent. Mm-hmm. All right. Any, any questions, comments, observations? No, it's just big action scene. That's right. Big action scene. Big old action scene. <laughs> that is a big action scene right there. <laughs> Uh, back aboard the ghost, <laughs> the others have learned about what happened to Ezra's parents, offer their condolences to him. Mm-hmm. Leia talks with Ezra. Uh, and do you think that that's going to have anything to do with him turning to the dark side? Mm, that, that is a good question, because the fear of loss is a path to the dark side. The dark side? The, the dark side. That's <laughs> where they get rawr. They get their claws out and they go rawr. It's the rock side. It's where all of the Tyrannosaurus Rexes are. Rock side. It's also where they're rock and roll side. With the guitar case. Yes. Uh, one man had himself a guitar case. Started moving to the music. Swinging my hips. <laughs> We love Forrest Gump. We quote him quite often. <laughs> it's my fourth favorite movie ever. There you go. And if from that time on, if Ezra was going somewhere, <laughs> he was running. <laughs> uh, so let's see, where were we? Oh, yeah, they. I do wonder if it is a path to the dark side, or yeah. if it will be for Ezra. They're definitely, mm-hmm. I think, setting up a little bit of ambiguity there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those questions of, but with the cartoon show being a cartoon show and the age group being the age group, would they pull that? But, you know, I remember the first time that uh, Saj Ventress ran through Spike from Buffy. Yeah. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yay, death! <laughs> yeah. So, you know. There are actual consequences, consequences on the show. Consequences show, that's right. <laughs> Why am I yelling so much? <laughs> I love the yelling channel. Unlike that last Twilight movie. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Where you're like, oh, this is awesome. Wait, wait. I don't like those movies at all until that, that final battle scene. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. You're getting into like, it. You should not do things because your head gets ripped off. That's right. And then, like, oh, it was a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> you know, that, that wasn't even in the book. I know. But but they had to have, they <laughs> like, was like, well, let's put an action sequence in the movie. Okay, but then we'll still say it was a lie. <laughs> I saw somewhere someone had posted, it was probably on Facebook, uh, a a conversation. It may have been an Instagram or Reddit. I don't know. But anyway, the point was made. They're like, what if the Twilight books had just followed, like the main character was Bella's dad. Ah. And it's like, Bella's dad finds out that his best friend is a werewolf, that the town doctor is a vampire, and they've got to team up to fight off a bunch of vampires <laughs> in this town up in Maine, or not Maine, up in like, uh, uh, where, where, where's, where's, uh, where is it? I don't even remember now. Forks, Washington, Washington State. Oh, okay. And it's like, yeah, that'd be an awesome <laughs> would movie. would be good. <laughs> like my best friend's a vampire, the town doctor's a, uh, my best friend's a werewolf, the town doctor's a vampire, we gotta fight them. <laughs> team up with my buds. That like, would be pretty sweet. Because Charlie was always my favorite character in those movies. He was the most realistic character in, those was. Entire, in all those movies. What are you talking about, man? It's sexy, sparkling vampires. 
<laughs> a couple hundred years old, you know, but uh, they, they still like the rock and roll. Actually, I don't know if they ever listen to rock and roll. That was a thing, apparently, in the books, like, like uh, Bella makes fun or thinks it's amusing that, like, Edward's tastes in books and stuff skew old, you know, mm. like, cla- more kind of classic stuff. So mm-hmm. it's kind of, but we don't get that in the movies. Mm-mm. We just get sparkly, and then we get wolf, or we got shark boy. Wolf buff. <laughs> wolf, bu- wolf, wolf buff shark boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I look like when I take my shirt off. Wolf Buff Shark Boy. I look like Wolf Buff Shark Boy. Actually, I don't know. I never look in a mirror. Handicapped people freak me out. So anyway, <laughs> uh, where were we? Yes. Uh, so I wonder. I think it's possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so so the, 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 the ghost crew, not because they're dead. <laughs> going to get old. Don't do that every time. Yes, never tell okay. you about in, uh, in the Evil Dead. Like how I think one of the episodes that you haven't seen mm-hmm. yet, they they give a name to their little team. Really, so you got Ash and you got uh, Pablo. Oh yeah, and isn't it like the, the ghost, ghost beaters? Ghost beaters. <laughs> so wonderful. So good. I, I've got to watch the rest of that season. Yeah, I really do. Ash versus the Evil Dead. Yeah. There you go. So uh, let's see. Where are we? This is why episodes take forever. Yep, it's fun. <laughs> you like it and you know it. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Ezra's parents are dead, mm-hmm. and his friends give condolences. Leia and Ezra talk about how his parents inspired many to resist the Empire's rule. So Leia kind of giving a pep talk. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. Her, uh, his, his parents, Ezra's parents, fighting against the Empire. Her dad, the Empire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't know it yet, but uh, it kind of stinks for her. Uh, let's see. At the base... List is notified of Leia and the cadets kidnapping and orders an immediate search of the grounds of the surrounding area to find the rebels. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the cell wonders how they can get the cruisers. Yeah, here it is. If they might be able to get one, but they certainly can't get all three. Leia motivates them. Don't be handy can't be handy can. Wait, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Don't be a Mexican to be a Mexican. Mexican. That's right. <laughs> and so she motivates them, saying that they can do it. Here's the way the Wikipedia article reads. Leia motivates the team by saying how they can get them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate the zeal that a 12-year-old has. <laughs> I'm not being rude. I'm, I promise. I'm not being rude. I think it's awesome that kids are like, man, I like the show and I want to write, I wanna write about it. And I want to. I, I think that's great. I really, really do. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I think it's great. I, and, you know, yeah. So I promise I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm serious. I'm serious. It I'm, is a 12 year old. I know that for a fact. <laughs> what if Melissa's are like, well, screw you guys. It was me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's tough. Writing is difficult. Uh, it is very it's hard. Not easy. <laughs> not easy. Uh, they quickly formulate a plan how they can get the ships. Uh, mm-hmm. Ryder uh, Strong is a part of his plan <laughs> because he, when he was in prison, did some work on these gravity boots. Mm-hmm. And so he knows how to undo them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kind of works out well then. Yeah. Yeah. Shawshank guy was in prison. Right. And so Ryder joins in. Uh, explosives won't be necessary. He can disable the gravity locks. He will assist them if they get him off the planet. Sounds reasonable. Mm-hmm. At the garrison, List and his soldiers notice the Phantom touch down. The soldiers put their guns on stun in case the rebels are aboard. But they find Kanan and Ezra in their disguises along with Leia. Leia tells Liz that Kanan saved her life and that he should be given a medal. Actually, I guess it should be like. We do it every time. Uh, so, while Liss and his soldiers are distracted, Ryder, Chopper, and Sabine disable one of the gravity locks. Sabine goes inside to pilot the cruiser while Ryder and Chopper move on to the next one. Leia tells Liss that one of the ships he is protecting is flying away, and he immediately orders his soldiers to stop the rebels. One of the ad attacks the ship, 
Uh, then they see Ryder and Chopper disabling a gravity lock, open fire on them. Kanan and Ezra knock List and his two soldiers out. Kanan draws out his lightsaber, so everybody knows the Jedi are still around, and Ryder realizes that Kanan is a Jedi, which that was a kind of a, a cool moment. Mm-hmm. Kanan... Uh, pulls a, I'm cooler than Luke Skywalker, and <laughs> severs the two legs of the ship. I mean, really. Yeah, like, why, <laughs> like I guess uh, Luke wasn't well trained enough to do that. They had to do That's it with right. a tow cable and then, just, and then uh, open, open up a hole. hole and throw a thermal detonator in it and <laughs> blow it up. It's like, dude, you could have stayed on the ground, made one swipe, <laughs> and walked away. And done like the whole thing where you walk away and it explodes in the background. Yeah. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Force guy. Directed by Michael Bay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler Perry is Baxter Stockman. Did you hear that? Tyler Perry's going I think I that'd be kind of cool. I actually yeah. like Tyler Perry, so um, I think I think that might be neat. But anyway, yeah, so apparently... I think it's funny how there's some people who are talking about, like, that's a, another instance of PC casting. It's like... It's like, he no. was black in the original yeah. comic. The, co- the, 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 <laughs> the cartoon show changed him to a white guy. Yeah. So... Now, granted, I like a lot of the things that the cartoon show brought us. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of these people that's like, cartoon show is doo-doo and nothing from it should be brought in. But that is definitely a matter of you just need to know your originals. Mm -hmm. You need to know the source material. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, um, and that's the thing. There are these moments where it's like, you know, well, wait a minute, you're doing something much cooler than, Le- than Luke will do later on. So yeah. it's like we're watching Empire Strikes Back. It's like, he's going to do it, and I'm going to get to see it live action. He's going to slice it. Well, what's he doing? Luke, you're wasting time. What are you doing? Oh, well, you sliced the hole open. Didn't you realize you could slice the legs off? You moron. That chin dimple does you no good. Not nearly as cool as Obi-Wan's chin dimple. Maybe Obi-Wan's Luke's daddy. They both no. got chin dimples. No. no, no, maybe Luke. I mean, oh baby, Obi Wan is raised daddy. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> not so, possible. Not gonna happen. Uh, let's see. So, Cannon draws out his lightsaber. Maybe it's Obi Wan's brothers. Maybe, daughter. yeah. <laughs> I'm the nephew niece of Obi Wan Kenobi. It'll just be dumb. That would take it's, too much. Obi Wan's brothers, sisters, cousins, <laughs> yeah. former roommates, which makes us absolutely nothing. <laughs> so much cool that Empire Strikes Back. Adat falls over. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the ghost offers air support to distract the Adats, although their armor prevents their missiles from having much of an effect on them. Mm-hmm. But again, you can slice them up with a lightsaber willy nilly, no problem. Ryder and Chopper disable the second gravity lock, tells Kanan to get in and pilot it, realizing that the rebels need help. He goes aboard the third... Uh, so who is it that told him? Because it says, Ryder and Chopper disable the gravity lock. He tells Kanan to get in and pilot it. Who's he? Ryder? I don't remember. I don't either. I don't remember either. I don't even remember this episode happening. Wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> who are you? Realizing that the Rebels need help, he, I think that's supposed to be Ryder, yeah. goes aboard the third ship, yet while telling Chopper to disable the gravity lock, Ezra notices two stormtroopers surrounding Ryder and uses the Force to take their blasters from them. It's like, oh, look, more cool Force that, stuff. This That little bit's funny. Yeah. Because he takes it, it takes it from, or in, uh-huh. and like one flight Knocks hits him, him in the head. head. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, Great. clever writing. Because it's like, yeah. you think, well, come on now. He's doing stuff that Luke couldn't do. and But then mm-hmm. he messes it up a little bit. It's yeah. like, oh, that's very smart. That's, that's very nice. It's but now Ray could do it, though. Oh, yeah. She can do it, no problem. Yeah. And be super cute doing it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Josh loves him some Ray Ray. Loves me some Ray. Ray Ray. Uh, let's see. So, where were we at? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, not yet. Where is it? Right there, somewhere <laughs> in this vicinity. Uh, yes, found it. Shut up. <laughs> Ezra <laughs> hits himself in the head. Leia then shoots at the soldiers, knocking them out. Imperial reinforcements arrive, tell the other ad to take out the ships. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. Blow it up. Blow it to kingdom come. Leia tells the officers not to kill them because of the ships, but the officers say that they have to follow their orders. They can't let the ships fall into rebel hands. Ryder forces the ship to fly despite the gravity lock and engages the thrusters. This is kind of clever. Using the exhaust from the ships to knock over the AT-AT. And so, boom, it falls down. And thus, having a Why don't they just do that in Hoth? Yeah, for real. Why don't they just get a bunch of speeders? Just bring all these transports. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The first transport is away. Wait a minute. Hey, first transport. (laughs) Go over and blow over the AT-ATs. 
There you go. Or just get a bunch of the uh, the speeders. Yeah, just just <coughs> position no. yourselves all on the side of that thing and then just blast right. off. Because you can hover. Yeah. Because you got anti grav stuff. Because yeah. that's how you take off and stuff. So just uh-huh. put it in park. And then hit the gas. That's it. <laughs> it's like, imagine just like, General Veers is in the walkers, like, bom, 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 you know? And they're like, what are they doing? Oh, no. <laughs> Take that, you Nazi. Because <laughs> he's a Nazi in an Indiana Jones movie. That's right. That's right. Donovan, right? I think so, I think yeah. That's him, yeah. From, mm-hmm. from the... the you curvaceous know. lady <laughs> I was doing my head like that no you know the the cup the the the, the holy grail. grail yeah the grail the grail <laughs> <laughs> we like that movie too <laughs> all right so a lot <laughs> There are some who call me Tim. Tim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, so uh, Chopper takes off in the Phantom. Yes, right. I know the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> the Beast of Kaibano. <laughs> <laughs> when Josh was like five, he could quote that whole movie yeah. to me and would do so. Both. On command and without being commanded. <laughs> oh, so good. Mm. <sighs> so, Chopper takes off in the Phantom. Leia and Ezra say goodbye to each other. Say, Not just a harmless <laughs> little bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you silly goose. <laughs> oh, okay, keep going. Okay. I don't mess with you anymore. I don't believe you. I know you don't. <laughs> You're <laughs> smart. <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Okay, so Leia and Ezra say their goodbyes, saying you know they'll see each other again soon. But before they go, Leia tells Ezra to stun her with his gun to avoid suspicion. Mm-hmm. So it's like in, ep- in episode four when it happens, not the first time she got the little blue circles right. on her. And I think she likes it. I think she does too. Like, do it. <laughs> Stun, Stun me, me again. again. <laughs> Hurt me more. <laughs> Hurt me more. Put some mistake on it. Uh, so that's what uh, happens. Ezra does so, just as List and the other stormtroopers regain their senses, which prompts him to go see if she's all right. She tells him that she's fine, but all of the ships have been stolen by the rebels. Not Leia's fault, though. Uh, Leia threatens to blackmail List unless he pays for the missing ships, which I thought was uh, mm-hmm. you know kind of interesting. It's like, you know, and he's like, okay, yeah, Alderaan will get reimbursed. He's like, ooh, making a little profit there, yeah. Leia. How about mm-hmm. that little wheeling and dealing? Mm-hmm. Nice. You should go work for the uh, for the the banking clan on Mutalist. Yeah. Mm, building huge, massive warships. <laughs> 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 My army is ready, Tesla. Um, so he complies. He agrees, realizing that his ship is also missing. He arranges to find another ship for Leia. In deep space, the Rebels are pleased that they managed to get all three ships. One, two, three. We will see them in the next episode. Mm -hmm. Ryder, now realizing what Ezra's parents started, has become even larger than what he had originally thought. He offers to help the Rebel cause for both them and their son's sake. The screen pans as the growing Rebel fleet moves out of the Lothal system, and we don't get any music. Nope. (laughs) And that is a princess on Lothal. Any any uh, anything you want to add to that? What you think of that episode as a whole? I thought this was a good episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I after seeing the big trailer mm-hmm. with all the really cool stuff yeah. in, it, like it was uh, a letdown is a wrong wrong hmm. wrong way word. to put it. Yeah, but uh, I, I was just like, I want something big, <laughs> and like and and this this episode wasn't no no, but I mean, still a good episode. Yeah. Um, I definitely, and and this may change as Mm -hmm. the show goes on and if Leia's in it anymore, I definitely like um, younger Leia better than uh, Clone Wars Padme. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Clone Wars Padme sometimes just... Yes. Sometimes got on our nerves. A little bit, a little bit, but... but but clone, but Rebel Leia, mm-hmm. you know, and, and partially it's because Rebel Leia is is trying to fight the Empire, mm-hmm. and she's not being preachy about it the way that sometimes Clone Wars Leia was being preachy about stuff. And it's like have a perspective, have a position. 
urge people to, to, to see the, the logic in your point of view and the correctness of it, mm-hmm. but don't be preachy about it. Yeah, exactly. Because if you're preachy about it, Padme, we're going to be preachy back. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But I thought it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought, you know, the animation, again, is getting better. It is. Um, the uh, I think the writing, not that the writing has been bad. The writing's been good the whole time. But I think the dialogue mm-hmm. is getting a bit snappier. The music mm-hmm. is getting more original, too. Yes. I think they've kind of let the uh, let the foot off of Kevin. You will use John Williams. <laughs> I, I think it's kind of the same, probably the same mentality as Episode 7 having Starkiller Base. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's probably like, let's, you know. Really? Yeah, let's really, really at, do at, it. Up front, let's make sure everybody knows that this is Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So let, let's do that with the music in this movie, and we'll do that with the visual in the next movie. Or, or in this show, yeah. we'll do, in the movie. Visuals we'll do in the movie, the yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think once, now that, you know, they've kind of established themselves as, you know, okay, this is a decent show and it's getting decent ratings, mm-hmm. so let's. Let's now kind of back kind of, off. Yeah, on that now it can bit. be its own thing a little mm-hmm. bit. It can breathe a little bit and be Clone Wars again. So there you go. Yeah. And we get some Clone Wars stuff here mm-hmm. in this next episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole idea that Sabine Wren is of House Visla. Yeah. I mean, pre Visla. And yeah, in right. this episode, they even make the point of being like, Visla, your death watch. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Lithium Hello. mode. <laughs> Lithium mode off. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's number four, four I believe yeah. yes from part two hmm. well then shall we talk about shall we talk about Concord Dawn Concord Dawn Concord Dawn <laughs> yeah. and the protector thereof okay so <laughs> uh, let's see uh, there's no cookie no I'm just so used <laughs> there being a cookie yeah <laughs> so before we get started what did you think of this episode sort of in general um it's pretty good. Yep. Yet again, it was like you know, like we just said about the yeah. uh, the Leia episode. It was it's kind of you know, it's just kind of a humdrum it's episode. Like, where I, I was want like, the I big want, stuff. I want, to, I want to see why Ezra's got a, a, a cross guard lightsaber yeah. and all that junk. I want to see other than the fact that it's just cashed in on episode seven, exactly, which is the <laughs> obvious reason. Yeah, it's like I, I want to see, I want to see uh, uh, Ahsoka talking about Anakin. I yeah. want to see Anakin in flashbacks and hear Matt Lanter talk like Anakin. Mm-hmm. And you know, show me Obi Wan, even though you haven't told me you're going to, but do it, do it, <laughs> do it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I agree. Good episode. Yeah. But now it's like after seeing that trailer, yeah. it just it's like. It, it just, it's just it's 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 not spoiled us. It's like ruined us. Yeah. <laughs> for non-monumental episodes to some extent. Yeah. I mean, we still enjoyed it. Yeah, they pro- probably should have after after seeing that or after that trailer, that, they should have probably put something big right at the beginning. Right. Just to know. be like, okay, whoa, <laughs> and, and then, then had some yeah. of these. Yeah. Well, maybe that's supposed to be Leia. Maybe we're just not digging it enough. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. You know, oh, it's Leia. <laughs> but so another good episode but not again another mind-blowing episode mm-hmm. so here we go there's my phone Bling. <laughs> all right so the wikipedia says this the galactic empires em, empires there's there's more than one no. more than one yes. empire the galactic <laughs> empire continues to hunt the fledgling rebellion making the rebellions travels throughout the outer rim territories difficult that's always the issue we always need transport in the outer rim mm-hmm. uh, it's the same thing that's going on in the clone wars movie if yep. you remember, that's why they wanted yep. the huts. Yep. Uh, and so now it's the Mandos. Mm-hmm. Used to be the huts, now it's the Mandalorians. The crew of the Ghost meets with Commander Jun Sato and Rex. I like that Rex is just there. Yeah, he's like, okay, I'm not. I mean, I'm a big deal, but right now I'm just kind of doing a thing. I'm we're not even gonna make the episode about me. I'm just here, right? Because it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. This is great. And so uh, they they meet. What's with- gonna happen when Rex finds out? Who Darth Vader is, oh, or that, will he find out? Really, I think he needs to find out, and I don't know what that'll do to him. Mm. That's very interesting because we, we, I mean, we don't know what Ahsoka's going to do, but we have some kind of idea. How could you do this, Master? Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. But, but for Rex, having been a clone, and we still don't know why he didn't do Order sixty six. So it's mm-hmm. like we still don't know enough about him to know why, you know, how. Like, like it just doesn't help us figure out how he would react. So yeah. Yeah. That'll be nice. Mm-hmm. They should do that. They should sure. let us see that. Uh, but so they meet with him and the assembled rebels, uh, assembled rebels, that is, to discuss their options for opening a new hyperspace route through the Lothal sector. Sabine suggests 
Concord Dawn system, which houses a Mandalorian colony on the planet Concord Dawn that's not yet within Imperial territory. The system is known for its elite warriors known as the Protectors, and according to Rex, the Mandalorians of Concord Dawn once helped train clone troopers during the Clone Wars. That kind of makes sense, yeah, given Jango Fett and everything, but yeah. another nice little reference to the Clone Wars. Is it, like, officially confirmed that Jango Fett was a Mandalorian? You know, I don't know. Because I know at one point there was some EU blowback that, oh, he wasn't a Mandalorian, he mm-hmm. just had... But I, I want to say that it's... I want to say it's confirmed that he was a Mandalorian. Well, the reason I ask is because in this episode, mm. um, one of the Mandalorians asks yeah. Sabine how you got your armor, and he refers to her as a bounty hunter. Yeah. Well, we know that Jango Fett was a bounty hunter. Right. So maybe he stole his armor from somebody. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't a real Mando. Yeah. Well, well, you know, in in Clone Wars, mm-hmm. um, isn't that what the president, uh, or not the president, but whatever, the guy that Obi-Wan first meets with on Mandalore, says mm-hmm. or something like you know he's not a mandalorian we don't know where he got that armor from blah 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 i can't remember i want to say that's did. what he said but then maybe it turns out he was like death watch or something yeah um so, so this is the thing yeah, folks sure. we don't always remember things very well so we'll have to no. look into that um because you know hard-hitting investigations is not what you're going to get with this show <laughs> no uh, <laughs> we're like, i don't i think luke skywalker could use the force i think i think he could is that right I, or was it was it here or was it Han Solo? I don't remember. I don't know. And who's the gold <laughs> fella? Who's like you know? Oh, the amazing things happen. You should find one. That's oh, so, so good. good. <laughs> hey man, what would happen if you look at a dead spider? Oh, the amazing things will happen. You should find one. <laughs> hey man, you may go and talk. Was this a mandatory thing or an optional thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you you should definitely go check out the bad lip reading videos of all three yes. of the original trilogy yes, movies. Yes, indeed. And what we were just quoting is from the first one. From yeah. Star, from just Star Wars, a bad lip reading. And it's quite it's quite good, yes. When, when you watch it, tell Greedo I said hi. That's yeah. all I say. <laughs> Love Greedo. Love it. Okay, so anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Your monkey go, woo, woo, woo. Oh, goodness, so good. So good. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we'll have to look that up about about Django Fett. I could look it up right now, but I don't want to. Yeah. So I'm not going to. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but but interestingly enough, you know, the claim could be made uh, that maybe they're thinking about Boba Fett. Because Boba Fett at this point in time would be a bounty hunter with Mandalorian armor. Yeah. So, uh-huh, you know, yeah, it, it, could be, it could be an oblique Boba Fett reference. You, mm-hmm. you never, you never know. Uh, let's see. But anyway, uh, so... Uh, with 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 the Mandalorians having cl- trained some of the clones, a little info from Rex there. But Sabine says that they're the type of warriors that follow their own rules. So even though the Empire is in control of Mandalore, nonetheless these guys might not necessarily be at the beck and call of the Empire. Mm-hmm. Uh, believing that diplomacy with the Mandalorian warriors is impossible, Commander Sato suggests they send a military force, which is interesting to see that sometimes. The rebellion was like, well, we ought to start killing people. It's like, (laughs) that's kind of what the Empire does. You don't want to do that. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You want to avoid that, even though your enemy uses those tactics. And you might feel like we've got to do that, too. Mm -hmm. It's Well, it's like uh, Kanan says to Sabine towards the end of the episode when she's called out the the death, you know, duel to the death thing with uh, the protector guy. Mm -hmm. He's like, if you do this, you're no different than them. Yeah. So... Sato's like, let's bomb them. Uh, but uh, Hera thinks that they should instead try diplomacy, that they should try to see if they can get these Mandalorians to agree to help the uh, the uh, rebellion. If they can get permission to move the rebel fleet through the Concord Dawn system, it could lead to recruiting the protectors into the rebellion and strengthen the rebel forces. Sato has reservations about the diplomatic approach, but he allows Sandula to take the mission. Ren volunteers to go with her. And so they go, and it does not work out very well. No, it does not. They show up. They meet one of these or a few of these uh, these Mandalorians. Hera explains who they are, what they're trying to do, and he says, Oh, so you're the rebels I've heard about. You know, Sorry for you. 
and then they start fighting and they mm-hmm. fight for like about an hour in space <laughs> yeah with and no music no music <laughs> and they apparently forgot how to work their hyperdrives <laughs> yeah because it's like oh well we can't go to hyperspace right now to escape because these guys are behind us yeah <laughs> and so we need Hera to like I guess get in between them or something so that we I'm like y'all I've flown in A-Wings before. Yeah. Josh has flown in A-Wings before. Yeah. It's not very it's not very difficult. You know, you you, you set you get your such your thingies while you're flying, and then when it's time you hit the button and your ship will automatically turn and jump in hyperspace. That's it. Duh. Over. Come on. <laughs> A little false drama here. Um but it does allow us to see like three hours of ship battling there. Yeah. Um and you pointed out that, you know, it's unfortunate for the Mandalorians that their guns yeah, on the parts of their ships. So they could probably, if if the, if the the wings weren't like flipping around the cockpit like that, <laughs> yeah. that you know, and the tips of the wings are the guns. It's like if it wasn't ha- flipping around just so they could turn and stuff, you know, probably maybe I don't know, you know, might could hit something. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be it would be like uh, if 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 cars fought each other, yeah, but your guns. We're just on your wheels. Yeah. And it's like, well, wherever I turn is when I'm, if I'm turning, I'm shooting over there. You better watch out if you're over there. Maybe you're my ally and I want to get close to you, but too bad. That's where my gun's going. It's just a very, very bad idea. Yeah. Or like if you're like a soldier and your your gun just sticks out your chest. You're right. You know, and you turn and it's like, hey, Dave, boom. Oh, no, Dave. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's, uh, that, that being said, mm-hmm. the, the design of those ships is cool. Yes. And, and does harken back to Mandalorian designs from the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. which would, would only make sense. So the uh, the battle does not go well for our Rebels, although they do knock out one or two of the Mandalorian ships. They have to run and hide and escape and flee, and Hera's ship gets badly, badly damaged. Mm-hmm. It was a cool image of her coming out of hyperspace, still kind of tumbling yeah. uh, with stuff sort of floating with her. Yeah. And uh, she is, of course, not dead. Right. She couldn't die. I'm not going to kill off the main character. How crazy would that be? That'd be a big deal. (laughs) But she is in the hospital. (laughs) And so she's in the hospital, and Sabine wants revenge. Mm -hmm. And Kanan doesn't want revenge. Well, he does talk like he wants revenge. Yeah. Because he says, my plan is, we're going to go. I'm going to go. None of you are going to go. I'm going to go, and I'll take Chopper fine. But And I'm going to go, and I'm going to destroy their ships. Mm Mm-hmm. But then we find out that he actually had a different plan. This is like the millionth time in this show, though, that Kanan's been like, I'm going to go do something. And then everybody else is like, no, we're coming too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, probably, though, if you would just let him do stuff by himself, things would work out a little bit smoother. That's a very good point. It's like, <laughs> you're messing it up. Yeah. Let the Jedi do his Jedi thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you just sit back and play video games or something. Yeah. And everything will be fine. It'll all work out. Because, like, the the thing with, uh, with um, what's his name? What's the guy's name? I, the bad guy? Yeah, the bad, yeah. I uh, forgot. Uh, uh, j- b- 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 let's call him, let's call him Tim. Tim? No, his name is something Rao. Yeah. Uh, Rao. Rao Dower. Is that <laughs> Rao Dower? Yeah, so Rao. Let's call him Rao. Okay. Well, Finn Rao. Finn Rao. Yeah. Okay. Another Finn. That's right. Another Finn feels <laughs> ill. But, like, Kanan is handling that negotiation very well. Yeah. And it seems like this Rao's Dower fella, mm-hmm. he's like, You're yeah, right. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of listening to that. Yeah. But then Sabine, or, or Sabine gets caught. Mm hmm. And then it just throws a wrench into it. And I know she's trying to do the thing, do it the way she feels like it needs to be done. Right. By, you know, blowing up the ships, challenging the guy to combat, shooting the guns out of his hands. And then, you know, that'll prove to him that you don't have to kill people. Right. But it's like, if you just would have let Kanan talk to the guy. For real. It was going fine. Communication, (laughs) Rebels, is an important thing. Yeah. Because she's got her plan. He's got his plan. They don't know about each other's plans. And it's, and what's funny is their plans are different, but they're not, as different as it seems right because it you know she's acting like oh i'm gonna shoot him down like a duck mm-hmm. but 
she actually does has no intentions of shooting him down like a duck. Right. So they're not as different, though There's they are quite. Five, that is number way. five, by the way. They're not as different as they seem, but they are still different. But if they would know what each other's plans were, mm-hmm. it might work a little smoother. Because like when 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 Kanan is giving her the speech mm-hmm. about if you do this, you'll be nothing. You'll be just like them. And she's telling him, "You need to stop talking now." I'm like, "Yeah, she's got some." She's got something up her sleeve. She's yeah. got some plan. She's got some scheme, and he's about to mess it up. So right. it's just these things go much smoother and be less sitcommy. Yeah, <laughs> if y'all would just talk. <laughs> it's like it's just the one where Chandler thought that that Joey said one thing, but Joey really said something else. <laughs> That's a good one. He's a lobster. Um, <laughs> but so, so it turns out that Sabine is is on the on on the ghost or not the ghost on the phantom mm-hmm. and um yeah they've got their kind of different plans and i think this is where uh he makes the point about what well, was she that is she re- figures out that his plan is not what he said his plan was because mm-hmm. that's the thing again communication and honesty yeah. jedi yeah you know, he's <laughs> like yeah i'll go blow the ships up but then it turns out his plan is to try to recruit them he wants yeah. to give them a chance so she figures this out and complains that this whole Jedi philosophy doesn't work for everybody, you know, mm-hmm. to which he responds, that's why we're at war. Yeah. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> People just listen to the Jedi things would be better. Yep. So that was, that was kind of a nice little nice little deal. So, again, this web of deceit of everybody having their own plans. Um, they They land on the planet. They run around. He keeps grabbing her. You yeah, he keeps that. touching her. It's like, stop touching her, Kanan. Like, they're, they're running around, you know, sneaking around through the, like, like uh, I guess it's, I don't remember if it was buildings or crates or whatever. Yeah, probably but, a little bit of both. Yeah, they're hiding behind stuff and, and all this. And, like, he keeps, like, he, he, like, touches her back, and then he, like, touches her arms. Like, they're, they're like, they're quickly moving from place to place. Mm. And, like, he, he, he grabs her arms and, like, pulls her into a place, and then he, you know, pulls his or he flattens himself against a wall and then she does it too and he like grabs her over mm-hmm. there it's like why are you touching it's like, her stop taking my hand <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah same being... pervy canaan <laughs> canaan jarris pervy jedi <laughs> that'd be you he'd be like that's friend. right that's he'd be me <laughs> yeah so uh, they, they 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 have the groping fit as they're walking to the building and then he said i trust you and he yeah. runs away. And it sounds like he says, I touch, touch you. you. It's like, yeah, yeah no. A lot. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> you nasty man, you. So so she goes to, you know, he said, I trust you. And then she goes to plant all the bombs that she's going to blow mm-hmm. up. He She wants to blow up stuff. He wants to talk. So uh, they, they talk. You get some tie-in here to, I think, one of the books um, deals with this whole issue of when... Kanan was younger. He and Depa Balaba were yeah. were uh, protected. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've not read. It's I think it's a comic. It's yeah, the yeah, Kanan yeah. comic. Yeah, it's a it's issue ten. First okay. Blood Part Four. The May <laughs> First Blood Part Four. I like First Blood Part Two. That's right. Not, not Part Two, <laughs> but Part Four. The Maces of Megiddo uh, mm-hmm. during the battle. Jairus, then known as uh, Caleb, fights alongside Depa Balaba and their clone forces on Megiddo. They are cut off and nearly ambushed by a large force of Separatist battle droids, but saved by the arrival saved by the arrival of Finn, Rao, and Skull Squadron. Young Caleb was left wishing he could thank Rao for helping him, and he is able to do that. Wow, that's interesting. Later. Yeah. I like that. That's a good tie-in there. Yeah. He finally kind of got to do what he wanted to do there. Yeah. And and I thought that 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 scene between Kanan and Finn Rao mm-hmm. was a nice one. Yeah. In, in terms of you know, the way it started, when he's like, you know, you must be pretty brave to come in here if, you know, just sneak onto my base and I'm going to have to kill you in a minute. And then he's like, yeah, look at my lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should think about that a little bit. And then they, they kind of have their old warrior moment there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you get this vibe that Finn Rao, he might be open to listening. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then And then, of course course the bean messes it all yeah, up just messes it all blowing up. stuff up and then she gets on top of the ship you know it's like a rave party and uh <laughs> and they're like oh we're gonna get you and that's the whole when the conversation happens about her being a, a bounty hunter right. that that faked the armor and then she says i am uh fan, house was it clan house, Ren? clan Ren of, of house, house Vizsla. Vizsla. and then they're like oh she's death watch traitor mm-hmm. which is interesting first of all that they would refer to death watch as traitors interesting mm-hmm. what you know what's going on there yeah um but then also 
the fact that they're like, oh, Death Watch. Yeah. So it's like, yay, Clone Death Wars. <laughs> that's, that's season two. That's the episodes with Obi Wan and Sabine. That's right. And Pre Vizsla, also known as Satine. Yeah. What, said, did I say Sabine? Sabine yeah. Oh, see? Oh, but I would. <laughs> Satine, not Sabine. Satine, it's all the same. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, you know, happy you moment. know, Ray's grandmother. That's right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> no, that's such a horrible idea. Horrible. No, no. <laughs> or would it be Ray's grandmother? Or would it be Ray's somehow mother? Because I've heard people try to claim that that she is both. I've heard some people say that oh she's Obi Wan's kid, and then some people say she's Obi Wan's grandkid. It's like she's she like, can't be Obi Wan's kid. That's like no that's, math. No, that does not work out. You fail. <laughs> not unless uh, Obi Wan somehow survived getting killed. That's right. And and that whole uh, Force Ghost thing was just a bunch of bull crap. <laughs> It's like you know, maybe uh, maybe Luke had some you know some bad squash or something, and yeah. messing with his mind a little bit. But no, I I I, I don't think she's related to any Kenobi. No, in any so way. Either. But mm-hmm. uh, but that's just that's just me. So, but they both talk with English accents. Well, that does. And Obi Wan says these are your first steps. Yeah, and he said like these are your first steps, child of mine. Yeah, sweet child of mine. Oh. <laughs> Sweet child of mine. Whether they trimmed all that out. It's in the novelization. Yeah. yeah. You read it. Oh, 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 sweet child of mine. Poof. (laughs) Oh, so sad. So sad. Uh, So uh, Sabine wants to... Have you noticed I've just gone off script here? Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You're not really, Nick? I couldn't tell. So, well, this one's a little bit more fresh in our minds because we just, just watched, watched this it. One. And there's not as much going on. No, I mean, it, it's really pretty not. great. They, they have the conversation. She's out there sneaking around. Mm-hmm. She blows stuff up. She wants to have the invoke the death shoot people yeah. you know, thing. And so. We're to face some one on one mortal combat. combat. So one of the Mandalorian underlings comes into Finn Rao's little hut and uh, it's like, you know, we got trouble right here and he says something and then Finn Rao says something about you know I don't worry I got the Jedi handled and the guy's like I don't know about this Jedi it's like you should be like whoa Jedi yeah <laughs> you're like this Jedi right here because this guy must be who you're talking about which he is the only guy not wearing Mandalorian armor so I guess that's an easy one to pin down but yeah. you should be like whoa <laughs> yeah I mean, it really should have a little Kramer moment there but he's like eh, what? I don't know about that but there's some girl out here she got on one of our helmets yeah and she wants to kill somebody <laughs> that's basically what's going on there. Okay, boss, there's a girl out here, and she's got on one of our helmets, and she wants to shoot somebody. So could you come out here and take a look? I think she might want to fight you. Might want to fight you. <laughs> and so, sure enough, that's what she wants to do. Yep. Finn, and by Finn, I mean Kanan. <laughs> Kanan and Sabine have their back and forth moment. But too bad, Finn Rao is going to die. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, I didn't know how the fight was going to what kind of fight it was going to be. And it turned out just be an old fashioned, you know, draw. Yeah. Kind of thing. What'd you think of the old fashioned draw kind of thing? Oh, it's pretty good. I mean, it was like, uh, the, the classic trope taken from the, uh, the, the old Sergio Leone movies Mm -hmm. with the, you know, show the guns, show the eyes. Mm -hmm. And then they squint a little bit. A little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Did you notice that it even did that when, like Mm -hmm. when they were in the soup bar thing and, Uh Kanan like rolled the the lightsaber across the table mm-hmm. and it like it did that kind of uh-huh. thing like the old west. It's like yay, yeah. oh the old west the old, or the ancient, ancient west. west. That's, That's number, number three. three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. <laughs> yes, yes, very good. Yes. So uh, Finn Rao does not want to join the rebellion because he doesn't think the rebellion can win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's what he said to Kanan that. Yeah, he remembers being young, and he remembers doing reckless things like saving Kanan, but it's much easier to kill Kanan than to join the Rebellion, because it's a yeah. losing cause. And Kanan says, look, the Rebellion, excuse me, the Empire doesn't want to share their power with anybody. Mm-mm. They want it all for themselves, so anybody that stands up to them is an enemy of theirs, mm-hmm. uh, or at least potentially an enemy. But, you know, Fenral doesn't want to hear anything about it, and so by the time we get to the she's calling him out moment... It, you know, he's like, look, if, if you want to leave here alive, the best you can hope for is that I die. Yeah. Um, so he's by this point, he's hardened and he's like, he's I'm not going to help. So then Sabine is all cool and stuff on the ship and 
where it shoots the guns out of his hands and then hits the buttons and then mm-hmm. the ships blow up. Yeah, and she probably should have stood a little bit more clear of that blast. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> that you know, not such a smart idea. <laughs> but it, I guess it all worked out. Mandalorian armor is some super sweet some protection. Some tight stuff. That's right. <laughs> Much better than what they give the, the stormtroopers. It's like, you know, thump them and they're like, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, let's see. So, there's chaos and craziness going or going on all the ships are destroyed except for finn rouse that's right so finn rouse is going to go get in his ship and now they have to go and get finn rouse mm-hmm. and so as you pointed out this yeah. is kane and jarris mary sue <laughs> right <laughs> list for us some of the things that kane and jarris mary sue does well he, he he's able to the main thing he's able to do is hold on to a ship that's, I mean, it, it's flying away. It, it's presumably super high speeds. Yeah. And he's able to hang on to it. Mm-hmm. And not only, like, he, he hangs from it at one point, mm-hmm. and he hangs straight down. Not like out to the wind side. Wind blown back. Exactly. Right. And he should. And then, as you pointed out, he wouldn't be able to breathe you know, above the clouds. Yeah. Once you get high up enough there, now, assuming that the atmosphere on Concord Dawn is like the atmosphere on Earth, yeah. rah, 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 but assuming <laughs> that it is, then yeah, once you get a certain level above the clouds, you can't breathe very well. That's yeah. why people asphyxiate. There there was a there was a plane. It was actually one of the kind of planes that the company I work for has. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one of those planes. It was the same type of plane. Mm-hmm. They call it the ghost flight or the zombie flight or something. It, it happened like somewhere in South America or something. But anyway, the uh, one of these planes took off and um, you know got on autopilot mm-hmm. and eventually they lost like radio contact. I mean they knew where they were, but nobody was responding. Mm-hmm. And so they scrambled some jets or something to intercept them. And they could look in and see that everybody was, like, dead. Wow. That apparently what had happened was there was some kind of leak in the cabin. And so the oxygen left, the atmosphere left the the plane. Yeah. And so they asphyxiated. But because it was on autopilot, the ship was still flying. Ooh, that's creepy, dude. Yeah, I remember reading about that before I flew in one of those planes. (laughs) They were like... How did they get the people out of there or land the they plane? Didn't, they didn't. They just let it crash? I think they let it crash. They wow. ran out of gas and crashed. I mean, you know, those planes aren't super huge. Yeah, So, yeah. I mean, and they monitored it, you know, as, while it was happening. But, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. Mm-hmm. But Kane and Jarrus <laughs> can be on the outside of one of a ship up that high, and he's fine. He got Jedi lungs. That's, that's right. <laughs> Jedi, not aqua lung, but Jedi lung. Right. Exactly. The other thing that he does mm-hmm. is he punches out a Mandalorian with one punch. That's right. And if we know the EU as well as we do... That's right. And, and we are super experts, as we've already told you. Right. You can't do that. You cannot. You got. It takes at least two or three to do it. At least two or three. And you got to be a man's man to do that's it then. Right. You can't... You can't if, to do it one punch, that's like, you know, Falcon Punch or something. <laughs> It's, it's, that you'd have to be like an F Zero driver, uh-huh. maybe, maybe Hadouken, you know, yeah. really quickly, and you don't see the Hadouken. You just looks like you punched him, <laughs> yeah. you know, for that to work. But yeah, because he, he's just like bam, <laughs> just lays him out. Never served a vip in his life. <laughs> That's would, number six. Uh, six, if you do math. <laughs> and and so so yeah, he just does that and he grabs him, mm-hmm. uh, and, and which is just is pretty manly. Yeah. No one says anything about that. But Ray... But Ray, no, 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 no. Without, without taking into any consideration that there's stuff that's going on that we don't know about yet, just Mary Sue. Right. And this is why Josh is bringing this up. Or yeah. Why this is a deal to Josh. Because he's tired. He is sick and tired of people <laughs> mocking his Jedi girlfriend that's and right. belittling her. That is my Jedi girlfriend. That's right. And I'm sorry, but the fact that she pulls a Jedi mind trick... Yeah. Not only that she pulls it, but even the fact that she knows what it is and yeah. knows how to try it means there's something going on that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. But that's a discussion for a different time. That's right. Yes. So the plan here, we find out, is that, yes, the rebels are taking prisoners now. Mm-hmm. And and they kind of explain this. I thought they did a pretty good job of explaining this in the dialogue, that because the Empire is not... In the business of freeing captives, which makes sense. I mean, what does Palpatine care? It's actually better for the Mandalorians on Concord Dawn if they don't know that 
Finn Rao has been kidnapped. Yeah. Because if they did, presumably they would just like go and terrorize Concordon. So it's better. Yeah. And that's why Finn Rao, when he wakes up and Sabine doesn't want him to get to talk to his home. And that's interesting because Sabine has been kind of a part of this plan. Yeah. But then she's like, oh, no, he can't talk to anybody. It's like, but I, <laughs> what, what, were you, what was your plan then? Was your plan just blow up the ships, not kill him and be like, <laughs> so watch it, punk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe that was, maybe her thought was intimidation. Like That's I could have killed yeah. you, but I didn't. So yeah. watch it. You should let us have clears, you know, clearance through your area. Whereas yeah. Kanan's whole plan was let's give them a chance. Yeah. Um, and so she's not on board with the, give them a chance. He is, and so that's why when when Finn Rao is allowed to talk to his people, he's like, "Don't tell anybody that I've been kidnapped. <laughs> Don't mention the rebels. Nobody knows I kidnapped. Just just put a dummy in my chair <laughs> and talk to me, and it'll be fine." And it all works out. So they they make it back to the roving Rebel Alliance headquarters, uh, at least this this you know this group, and uh, they 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 kind of put him into this. Uh, like I said, it's 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 being a prisoner, but it's what kind of re- what was it recruitment? A uh, 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 reluctant reluctant recruit. recruitment. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. You figure that Finn is probably going to be treated pretty well, unless Sato's like, "We shall kill him tonight." Right. <laughs> that way they will know. I mean, really, I was just like, "Dude, seriously?" You're like, "We should bring some A wings and we could go over there and make fast work of them." It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, and so then, of course, Hera's awake. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, she has bandages right where her helmet is. So yeah. I was like, well, we haven't really rendered the rest of her head. <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> so we're going to put this stuff over. I mean, maybe that's not it. But I don't recall <laughs> seeing those parts of her head before. No. So. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny to think about. Yeah. So, hmm, there's nothing there's under there. Nothing. Yeah. You got no brain. No brain. <laughs> you got no brain, Hera. <laughs> And then, of course, the apparently the recurring gag is, you know, we're taking prisoners now. I hear, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's uh, that's it. She's uh, happy with the way the mission ran out, uh, ended up. Everybody was happy, and apparently, the rebels have free passage through Concord Dawn. Right, and that's that was a little more direct of an episode. So. Yeah, it was. Um, now, what's interesting is we didn't get any kind of. Uh, like on the next episode yes. of Rebels, um, which th- this is something that really annoys me mm-hmm. about the Disney Channel or about Disney XD, Disney Channel, whatever Disney stuff mm-hmm. is they don't like. Sometimes they'll have they'll, they'll show two episodes of something, and then we're now we're going on break. Yeah, it's like what is going on? It's like do you people not have like. Are they not? Are the people not sending you the episodes at the right time? And they're delayed, or yeah. or do you just are you showing in more episodes of Dog with the Blog at That's that right. point, no, or we what? Got, we got to make Dog with the Blog and Lab Rats <laughs> and the uh, Spy Girl, who's not Kim Possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it's funny, you know, a lot of networks, cable networks in particular, seem to be doing that mm-hmm. sort of thing where it's just Liz was talking just this morning about some show. I, I didn't catch which one it was, uh, or she didn't say. Um, what that's my wife, by the way. Yeah, that's okay. my wife, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and and so she she it's not that she said something and I wasn't listening. She just didn't mention what show, but yeah. she was making the same point, presumably about something other than Rebels. That <laughs> why do these networks do this? They'll show yeah. an episode, they'll take two weeks off. They'll show another episode, they'll take three weeks off. They'll show three episodes, they'll take one week off. They'll do two. It's, Big Bang Theory does. It. Yeah, it's like you can't get a rhythm going Mm-mm. that way. Like. The only thing I've noticed that doesn't really do that is like, um, like like AMC with like Walking Dead. They mm-hmm. don't really do that. I mean, they have their mid season break like all shows do. Yeah, but uh, they don't really. You know, we'll be back in two weeks with this, except for last season or maybe it was this past season. Mm-hmm. They did that. They like skipped a week. Yeah, and then had the show. So I don't know what's going on with that business. I mean, I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> consistency like it just. You know, if if it's like you don't have any confidence in the product itself, yeah. you're like, well, we we got to stagger this stuff for something instead of just, look, we're gonna here it is seven weeks in a row, mm-hmm. you know, and and well, oh, well, we we don't have seven episodes, we've only got five. Well, then let's do five in a row, yeah, and then take the break and then come back. Don't just sort of this on again, off again sort of thing. Yeah. I, I think 
seems, I mean, I'm no TV expert, but it would seem to me that bunching them together, even if that means then bunching a break together, Mm -hmm. is better than, uh, you know, is there going to be an episode this week? Who knows? It's a luck of the draw. It's a 50-50 shot. There's no way to know. You you could be like, we're going to do five episodes in a row. And then when that was over, you could say, in three weeks, we're coming back, and everyone can know what's going on. Well, you know, they used to do that with uh, cartoon shows back in the day. Like, you didn't really know when seasons started or anything like that. You would just have to watch every week mm-hmm. to know if it's a new episode or not. Be like, oh, I haven't seen this one. I it, guess it started. Yeah. But even then, it's like they might show one new episode and mm-hmm. then the next one will be a rerun. Yeah. Um, I remember that happening a lot with um, Batman the Animated Series mm-hmm. and the X-Men cartoon. Yeah. Like that, I mean, that was all the time. Yeah. It show, I mean, it would seriously be one episode and then reruns. Yeah. Because they would keep the show in the same slot. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, unlike now where they just like, they just don't even show it. Yeah. It's like you show, you go up to watch whatever show you're trying to watch and it's not even there. Yeah. It's some talking dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you caught the fact that we're not fans of, ta- of dog with a blog? <laughs> It just, I mean, no offense to anybody on that show, but I'm just like, eh, I don't care so much about Mm-mm. that, you know. Now, now it's girl, not funny either. <laughs> no. Now, Girl Meets World. Yeah, we like that show. We like that show. Uh-huh. That's a good show. Yeah. Mm. Well, then, that we're almost finished with our first episode of Rebels Cast. Yeah. Volume two, as it were, yeah. of Rebels Cast. So, what do you think, folks? You, you going to stick with us? Yeah. Yeah. You should. And they say no. Because if you don't, <laughs> if you, if you don't we're going to be sad. Yeah. It's just the way it is. We're going to be sad. And you don't want us to be sad. I've already told you all I'm in a wheelchair. Well, actually, I haven't, but you could have probably figured it out because I don't have <laughs> legs. So I'm in a wheelchair. Do you really want to make a guy in a wheelchair cry? Yeah, because that's what you'll do. Yeah, and, 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 and Josh has a sweet face. And you don't, want to, you don't want to make Josh sweet face sweet cry. Sweet bearded face. <laughs> sweet bearded face Josh. <laughs> you don't want to make him cry, do you? No. Tears in the beard. Mm-hmm. Mm, so sad. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... But, but this, I think, is a pretty good indication of what an episode yeah. will be like again, except for more emails, theoretically. And yeah, sometimes we get more random, and you, haven't oh, yeah. met, and you haven't met the people on the couch yet, but we're nope. trying to work you into things slowly. Yeah. So yeah, There are people on the couch mm-hmm. in the and, room with us. And they're... And they're if, it, if you go back and listen to episodes of the Clonecast, you'll, you'll hear about them. All about them. All about them. Some good ones. <laughs> yeah, some good ones. Yeah. So, anything else? Um, no, I don't think so. All right. I think, I think we're good for our uh, first episode of Rebels Cast. Excellent. As us as well, folks. Thank you for listening, folks. Hope that you uh, you keep it up. And uh, we've already mentioned it, but let's mention again, Josh, how can they reach us? You can reach us at uh, Rebels Cast, at no, Rebels Cast SMG mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Yes. Or you can go to uh, our website that we don't do anything on called innerdorkdom.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on the Twitter. Yes. Uh, you can email us at uh, theinnerdorkdom at gmail.com. Yes. Uh, you can check out the Facebook. Mm-hmm. We have the Facebook pages. Yeah. Um, we've got southgatemediagroup.com. Yes. Lots of things there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lots of other podcasts about all lots of other shows If and it's topics. a show or a topic, there's a good chance there's a show Most about likely, it. Most likely. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But yeah, that's how you can reach that's us. That's how you can reach us. Well, I guess I, I think I hear the new music play. Ooh, More yeah. of that new music with that real symphony we've got. It'd be sounding good. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> well, then, I guess uh, if, if there's nothing else, this is how we end our shows, folks. Uh-huh. Ready, Josh? I'm ready. All right, so until next time, I'm Nick Weymouth. And I'm Josh Shaw. And we will see you in, in the future. future. I thought they were going to make new duck tails. Where is it? I don't I don't know, Josh. <laughs> <laughs>